All right. So what do you think? Hard. Huh? Um, it's hard. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> I, I took a picture before I start drawing because they're moving so fast. So no, no, no pictures. I mean, um, a picture for later for detail, for refine. I, I try not to do that. Uh, okay. What you're doing there, what you're doing there is you're sort of, you're starting to rely on photography again. We want to get where, and the, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with, um, once you get the hang of this, like, you know, working from reference when you need to and stuff like, there's nothing wrong with any of that. Because I don't like, there's a lot of this, I see it with students, I've seen it, it started happening, it seems like in the late 90s, where they kept going like, oh, that guy uses reference. It's like, of course he does, that kind of work you use reference. Some, some work you don't. Um, and there's nothing wrong with reference, but what I want you, you're going to work with reference. You're going to know how to work with reference by working from life. Does that make sense? Yes. And part yes. of them moving fast is part of the equation. You know, you got to like, mm -hmm. you know, get it thrown down. And then also, you know, like I said, like if I see somebody sitting in a certain position, you know, sideways at a table, if they get up and split, somebody else is going to sit down at that table. They're still humans. I can still pick some of their anatomy and finish out my drawing because every drawing I'm doing is not about a likeness or whatever. Does that make sense? Yes. Some of them are just about thrown down sketches, you know? So if this is a little bit of what we were talking about last week. Like we need to get into the interiors of this more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this one's from, a, some of these are from a photograph, right? No. As from life first, the, uh, so before I start drawing, I took the picture and then I, uh, I draw them in the, in the park life. But when I go home, I just uh, refine it. Yeah, so what we're not trying, we're not trying to get to like a refined drawing, really. We're trying to get to a nice sort of finished sketch. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. And then we got to get into these, you know, some proportion things. This is from life? Yes, at home. What about this one? Yes, at home. Oh, at home, okay. Yeah. So you have more time there, okay. Mm -hmm. Guitars are always a challenge, I think. So you gotta place this hand correctly, this elbow correctly, yeah. this hand correctly, this elbow correctly, then this fitting and everything falling into that guitar space, you know? Mm -hmm. Those guitars are just weirdly, and at least to me, they're just weirdly, they're weird to draw for some reason. Okay, so like here, you got some proportional issues there, right? Yes. So this whole section here. was probably longer. Did he have sleeves or were they short or were they like, you know, up up here? Um, just the t-shirt like yours now. Oh, okay. So then this probably would have came this way a little bit. Oh, okay. This will probably pull a little bit there. You might get a compression fold there on the fold. Mm -hmm. You know, and then this behind probably came down further. It still, it still needs to be a little longer. Yeah, I cannot see because there's a bag uh, beside him. You know, you're probably going to get a fold there. Maybe one here, pulling away. And then loosen this up a little bit. Okay. So again, I usually put in the sort of superstructure of the hair, if that's a word. I'd pull these glasses away a little bit, maybe break that silhouette. I might show a little bit of the mouth there, just a little. Pull that chin out a little bit. For me, it's always struggle to put uh, the mouth because it kind of looks weird. <coughs> Well, the way I, we talked about this, the way if it's a side view, the way I always think of it is that egg on its side, and then I just kind of put that in, and then I just go, okay, there's the nose. This brow basically leads into the eye socket. There's the cheek mass against the nose. I can put that back in, 
And then right, and then I look at, when I'm looking at the nose here, I'm looking at, and this will help you place it. So let's say I go, the nose is like that. Then I go, where does the nose, where does the upper, you know, the filson or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. Here, where does it meet the nose? Does it meet like right in front of the nostril? Does it meet a little further back? Is it a little, you know, it's probably gonna be about here. Then I just go, does it concave in? Does it convex out? Does it go kind of straight down? Okay. And I just, then I put that, and then this bottom lip usually is a little under the top one. Does that make sense? Yes. And then I go, okay, that this is gonna line up about with the ear here. And I might adjust this. How does the neck connect? So on and so forth. And, you know, and then I can go, where's this point land in relation to this eye? Comes up here. There's the part of the hair. There's this. You know, and I just kind of map it out. That makes sense? Yes. And then, so we're always... Here's another thing. Like if I'm doing something like, let's look at some. Like another thing that I just, you know, I don't think about these things all that directly anymore, but you know, like when I have this torso here and let's say that I know the rib cage is about there, these arms come out, that pit where the elbow is lines up about at the bottom of the rib cage. Okay. Right. And then like if I have this guy, you know, I'm just going to block in this. This is longer, this torso. You know, and then I'm going to go, how did this, how does this graphic shape work? A little longer. This arm's going to be a little, so I know that lands about there and that's probably going to be about there. And once I kind of map that out, then I can come in here and start to, um, start to um, refine a little bit. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, thank you. Screen grab here, hang on. So in other words, you're always measuring off the last thing you did, really. Or you put down those big shapes and you can kind of look at it. Um, you can kind of look at it and start to gauge it. Okay, does that all make sense? Yes, thank okay. you. Do you have any questions? Um, not right now. Okay, that, that makes sense though, okay. Yes, okay. thank you. Ah. Oh, that one's pretty good. Now let's look through here. By the way, on this here, Like, let's look at this. Just because you got a dog in here. Really think about it's the same thing. When I want to get through to you guys, it's just the same thing no matter what you're looking at. Let's pull a dog in here. To keep moving. <laughs> oh, yeah, they do keep moving. Yeah. But what you want to break it down to is, let me find a picture of a dog here real quick. What is that? What kind of dog is that? A golden noodle. A, friend, a guy I know has a dog just like that. I have seven at my house. What are they called? Oh, here it is right here. A golden doodle, a golden retriever and poodle mix. I'm just going to find a dog here. Okay, so one thing you can do with them, let's take this actually here. <laughs> so I'm going to use this guy just because I can see him. And you kind of want to break the shapes down the same way you do anything. So you want to come in here and go, okay, he's got this sort of thing. Now I'm going to do this very quickly. 
He's got this sort of, this is how I would think of it. It's not necessarily how I draw it, but this is how I think of it. It's got this snout here, mm -hmm. these ears, right? So if you notice, I'm just still keeping them all really simple shapes, right? Yeah, simple shape. Yeah, and then there's a little bit there, comes down. Okay, and then they have this kind of dips a little, comes up, has this little bit of a bean shape here, a little bit like that. Then this sort of section in here, this transitions up into here. And then we got this other one over on the other side. So I'm just trying to, and then again, here's that kind of thing we talked about last week, this little curve right here where it kind of comes down. So what I want to do, and then I go, okay, it's a little longer. It's a little longer. So I'll adjust it. I don't erase, I just adjust and put a tail on them. You know, and I have just the basic understanding of how this works, because now I could come in here and go, it's got a little brow line there. There's where his eye follows. There's the center of the head comes down here. Snout. This comes down like that. Up. You know, put his collar on him. Put a little more information in the ear. You know, does that make sense? Yes. How we're breaking it, and then this comes down. It's a simple little shapes. Mm -hmm. huh? The simple shapes first, right? Yeah, and then you know, and then once you sort of get like the dog figured out, you know, you go, okay, if I turn them around, this section here is going to come in in front of the hind quarters. And then I know, you know, this comes down like that. This kind of comes down a little here. And then the head's going to get buried here. I'm going to see more of this. Does that make sense? Yes. So it becomes shapes in front of shapes. Does that make sense? Yes. So then I can start to move it around a little bit. <clears throat> and then what you got to learn how to do. So first I'm just going, okay, that dog's sitting still. So I'm going to get the construction down a little bit. Okay. Because then I can start to do this stuff. You know, maybe this leg's forward. You know, the tail, all that stuff. Um, and then the ears would be up here. Collar. No, this probably see less of the nose, actually. This actually comes down. You know, and I can start to move them around, which I think is really important, okay? okay. Learning how to break these things down into simple shapes and then learning how to move them around is actually really important. Right? Right. What I'm seeing over and over again, I tell you guys this all the time, is I see these insanely stiff drawings all the time. With the tech, with, if it's technology, it's not fleshed out. <clears throat> it's very safe. It's, I don't understand the whole point of like hyper cleaning up a drawing unless there's some reason for it. It's like you just, you took all the, it just looks like a ruler perspective drawing. Does that make sense? Yes. Or I see people, I just saw one online it's a character lineup from a character design class. And the poses make absolutely no sense. I get what they're saying, but like the arms, like, you know, I think one of them was holding mm -hmm. the drinks like this, but the arms out like this, it's like you right. hold the drink like this, you hold a drink, right. like you know? And then my question is, did you ever get up and stand it up and go, how do I hold a drink? What am I doing with this arm? You know, what's my contraposto? How am I, where am I throwing my weight when I'm doing this? Get up and do it, right? Otherwise you have no right. idea. Like, and, and screw photos. I mean, you can look at photos, that's fine. But then what happens? They start copying the photo. And then I look at it and go, that's just a copied photo. It's stiff. It doesn't feel in, it doesn't feel natural in this environment. That's what I'm trying to break up a little bit. And I'm also trying to start to get your brain to go, oh, this is how you start to move characters around. Here's how you start to move dogs around. Here's how you start to move animals around. What, what, and, and I think it's good to do something like animal drawing or whatever, I think that's great. But then it's like, okay, now you got to move them around, right? Right. And there's a million people that do that kind of thing. And then I go look at their work and I go, okay, you know how to draw the muscles and which I could teach a monkey, which is great. You need to learn it, but it's like your work doesn't reflect that you know how to use this information. Does that make sense? Yes, right. And I want you guys to be fluid. So whatever kind of dog it is, just break down its basic shapes okay, or anything, right? Okay. So what I'm trying to get you to do is like not go, oh, that's a dog. Now I got to, uh, no, it's a bunch of shapes, put them together. And then okay. when you go, okay, I want to learn more about this. Sure. Go take animal drawing, learn a lot of that anatomy and all that stuff. Cause it's good. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then become David Coleman, who takes all that information and just goes off the deep end with it and just does all this amazing stuff with it, right? Right. Who is it? David Coleman? Col Coleman. David Coleman. I'll put a link. I'll put okay. a link at the uh, announcement. Yeah, I moved the announcement. Does it make more sense now? Yes. Okay, because what I'm on that committee for that talent ed thing, and um, and they're asking us to you know look at it. So what happened was just so you guys know, because I don't know why academia does this, but they do. So they go, they made this whole course module thing around that website, which I and then it's just sort of like, I don't know how many quizzes and all this kind of stuff, which I'm not going to bother you guys with. I don't think that's effective. Um, what I do think is effective is to have some discussion around it, questions around things that you think could be added into it. What I really want to hear also, uh, just like Ernesto was talking about what, what he got from it and what was interesting to him about it. I want to hear that. And I also want to hear, hey, you know, it'd be cool if they added this into it, you know, like from your perspective, okay? Because this, the reason I joined this committee, I don't like doing these committee things is I just don't have time for them, but I thought this one was kind of important. Because anything is connected to the industry or something like that, or jobs or whatever, then I want to make sure that you guys are, you know, if you can have some input into it, I want to have input into that. Does that make sense? Yes. So anyway, when I they go import this thing into your canvas, which I'm like, okay, that's cool. But then it like, it just immediately dropped them all in as assignments and all that stuff. So eventually, I'm going to go through them. I just want to go through them. But I don't see the effectiveness of quizzes. And I also, when I looked at it, I go, these are just rudimentary questions that I think a discussion is much more valuable than a bunch of quizzes. Quizzes to me feel very elementary school. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't you guys have, you guys, look, I want you guys working on work. I don't want you guys sitting here going, oh, you got to do this quiz. It doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, so that's, and so what it did is it pushed, it rearranged my canvas thing, which is really annoying. And I blame. Yeah, I can no longer look at it on my phone, but what? I can look at it on on my laptop. Look at on what? My phone. I can't not look on at the grades on Canvas app, but on my laptop, I can. The Canvas app, I think it's not bad, but it's missing a couple of things. Yeah, it is. It's missing a few things. Because I can't go. Like assignments. I can't go grades. on Canvas and put like. I don't think I can grade or I can't go on the app and like, I don't think I can grade or, or it's announcement. There's certain things that I can't do on there, which I think is really weird. And you also can't go on Pronto, I think as well. Pronto, I, so far to me seems sporadic. Yeah, yeah, I get that too. Okay, so it's not just me? Yeah, I yeah, would. It, it doesn't always work for me. Okay. When I was trying to turn in my homework last night, um, uh, Canvas for both your illustration class and this class straight up just didn't show me um, announcements, announcements, everything. Yeah, yeah that's why I went to Safari on my phone and I did it that way. Yeah, and then I checked my computer and it did the same thing. Yeah, no, so. no, that that wasn't. That's not your. That's not the app or anything. What happened was, and I have no idea why this. Okay, so I did two things. I imported all this town ed stuff in there because I kind of needed to because I have to if I'm going to have these meetings or whatever, and then. What I noticed it, and then I, I, because they go, does anybody know what the hell Office 365 is? Isn't that just the Office suite that Microsoft has always had? Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. So they just all that it? stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's like a subscription based thing now. You can't buy like individual software anymore. Ugh. So yeah. what's annoying? <laughs> about this? Okay. So this is what's annoying to me about academia. So then they go, okay, here's the milestones of this committee or whatever. It's like, and it was yesterday was a due date. He goes, uh, do it office 365 post blah 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 and i'm like where's office 365 post in on canvas is that what you're asking me to do because that's what it sounds like then i went back to him and i go where is this and they go oh it's it's this document it's a word document it's like why didn't you just send me the word document and say fill this out why did you say do an office 365 post i'm not posting anything the language is all screwed up does that make sense yes so then I imported 365 into my Canvas shot. And I don't like Microsoft products. So I really didn't want to do that. I only did it for this. And then it, that, I think, is... And then when I went this morning... Because last night I got a couple things really late where people would tell me it wasn't there or whatever. And then I went this morning. I went to every one of them. And I noticed it through 
announcements into the inactive area. So I had to pull it back up and pull it back up and pull it back up in every single class. So they should all be back up now. Yeah. Super annoying, yes. by the way. Yeah, the, the, the announcements thing is up. This in my, you know, like to mess with my canvas like that is really weird. Me no likey. Okay, here, where's Katie? Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Hi, Mike, I'm here. Okay, what do you think? Um, It was really fun. I went to the Irvine Spectrum and yeah, it started trickling on me, but I got to draw some people with umbrellas, which I thought was really fun. Yeah, one thing with umbrellas, you can kind of come in here and a lot of times, okay, I want you guys to understand this. A lot of times I'm showing you sort of a shape breakdown. It's not that I'm saying like, oh, go in and, and always do this shape breakdown into geometry and all that. What I'm trying to do is just get sort of the, to the point of how, how we're seeing. Does that make sense? Yes. And sometimes I do do a shape breakdown if I need to, you know, understand the shapes, you know. What I don't want to do, here's what I see all, another thing that I don't like. Like somebody was talking to me about this. Can you guys give me two seconds. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Okay. So there's a lot of discussion. Sometimes it's usually an entertainment design where they'll go, I'm going to put, and there's a place for this. I just think with organic things, that's not really the place. Hang on. And they'll go, you know, let me get smaller. Here's this box. And I'm going to do a three point thing, whatever. And then I'm going to build my horse in this box. So it's following the perspective and all that kind of stuff. And I, my answer to that is like, okay, A, you're going to end up with a really stiff drawing. B, I think when people are approaching it for that way, they're not that good at organic drawing, that this is not organic drawing. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, there's a place for that if you're working something out. I might do a little sketch over to the side if I was trying to figure out, you know, where's all this stuff going to fall? There's this shape here. I'm really going to just look at the horse from this viewpoint and go, well, I know I have that shape and this neck's going to be here. And I'm, what I'm really looking for is what's going to fall in front of what? Does that make sense? Yes. So this is going to come under here. So I'm, you know, the legs are actually in there somewhere probably. And I'm just going to go, well, this mass is in front of this too, basically is in front of this. And this comes down this leg, you know, where's it, it's going to connect up here, you know, but I, I can just sort of see, what I'm trying to get you to see is sort of see that as a 3D model and just sort of move it around and go where, where does everything fall behind each other? Like when you're doing a four short in life drawing, does that make sense? Yes. And there's a place for the other thing when you're, you know, it might be a building or something like that. You know, if you start constantly building everything in boxes all the time, your drawings are always going to look like kind of like a technical drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Which, you know, an art director is probably going to go, dude, these are really stiff. You know what I mean? These aren't very exciting. They're stiff. Yeah, that's one of the things I had a challenge with this week is having too stiff of drawings. And I really need to get better at pushing each of the poses. To Who's talking? Uh, Katie, I'm Katie. Oh, okay, good. I can't, I don't know why you're not lighting up. Oh, wait, you're probably over here. Oh, there you are. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Um, yeah, this week, one of the challenges I had was not pushing the poses enough. And it kind of made it, made my drawings lack some personality. <coughs> that... A, a little bit is, um, I mean, it's always knowledge and methodology and all that, which we're trying to get to, but then it's repetition. You just have to do it. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I mean, there's no, there's no way when I used to come over to Fullerton, I might've said this before, but I used to come over to Fullerton and talk once in a while. I'd come into classes and talk or whatever. When I, usually when I was working on something interesting and, uh, 
a lot of the students would would always want like I'd always bring my sketchbooks in and they go, oh, I want to be able to do that, whatever, you know, and they'd want shortcuts. And it, number one, the shortcut is to get methodology and get in that sketchbook and then practice repetition with the methodology. That's your shortcut. But nobody wants to hear that because that's hard work. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. And you got to do the hard work, you know, and that's what you guys are doing. And then again, I had an experience when I was 16. I don't know if I ever said this, but it had an impact on me. I got I had to go to traffic school when I was 16, right? And the cop in the, it was a cop or whatever it did the thing. And he, and at the time, I think they just started like the seatbelt laws and all that stuff. And uh, the guy, he, he, so they were trying to get you to do the seatbelt thing. And the cop goes, just put your seatbelts on for a month. It'll become a habit. Anything you do for a month will become a habit. And then always just stuck in my head because I did it. And then I, it became a habit. And I go, that's a cool little trick. Now, hopefully with doing this, and sometimes it takes a little longer than that. Hopefully with doing this where you're, you know, you're in a class and, and you're being motivated to do this. I'm hoping that you just, it becomes a habit. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. And I'm also hoping that, and I probably said this too a million times, that it just becomes part of your life. It's not a thing you go do. It's a thing that you just do like people do, like people breathe. You know, you sit down, you open up your sketchbook and you get, oh, wow, these are interesting. Oh, wow, look, there's a bunch of chefs back there. I'm going to draw them, you know, just things that are interesting you know, and, and just purely for the joy of sketching it. But, and then I like to think of it that way. Like I never think of any of this stuff as practice. I just think of it as like, I just love doing it. And the byproduct of it is that I'm getting a lot of practice. Does that make sense? Yes. I felt the same way too. Yeah. It, it, I think, you know, especially the more, you know, the better and better you get at it, the more it, le it feels less like practice and more like, this is just fun. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think it's fun. Okay, so here, this one's a little more successful. What I'd say now here, so again, we're not really getting on the interior too much. Like, look at that, this leg, and these legs have no information on the interior, correct? Yes, yeah, I, she, she moved pretty fast, so I kind of just got the basic shapes down. Same thing here. So what I think I'd start to try and do, let me find one proportional issues here yeah yes these feet are super stylized what you want to do is look at what you're seeing in front of you and then uh we'll start getting the stylization more next week i was going to do a little bit today but i actually think we should talk about crowds and, and vignetting first okay yeah when you do an umbrella the way you're thinking of it is this sort of shape that's a bad ellipse and then this shape then I go, it's got a panel, a panel, a panel. And then, you know, usually they kind of do that. Then this curves around and I can get this in there. And then maybe this goes into silhouette. And then in here, I need to get just enough information. There's usually these things in there. There's usually something there where it telescopes and maybe something there and then down here. So, and then this front edge, this leading edge, I'm going to darken up a little bit. So it pulls it forward. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. And usually there's a little, whatever there, you know, that's a sloppy one, but you get the point. Um, and then this person's going to fall backwards. Do you see that? Yes. So think about your, where's your center of gravity here? God damn it. Think about where your center of gravity is, right? Is it right. over here, you know? So if she was sort of doing something like that, she'd probably have to be leaning forward a little more to compensate, right? I always say that like, if you look at that side view or, you know, let me see if I can find one. Cause I think it's a really revealing kind of thing. Hang on. So if you look at this guy from a side view, it's not this straight up and down rigid thing, right? Right. There's this, and I always think this is interesting. You know, there's sort of this section here cantilevered over this section here, then this, and then that little kick where that goes behind that a little bit if I exaggerate it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So what you're looking at 
what I, the way I always look at it is, especially from the side view, it's this weird balancing act where everything's sort of doing this all the time. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So this is all, you know, if this, if something pulls back, then the head might cantilever over it to counterweight something, or you might throw the shoulders back to counterweight something else. So you're always in this, this, um, I, I remember one time listening to something, it was a science thing, but they were talking about how people are bipedal. Well, we're pretty unique in that, in the animal world. And that what they were saying is that it's really unusual that we have such control over that bipedal, you know, balance. And that we're really, a lot of times, the way that he was thinking of it is that we're always in this forward controlled fall. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Which I just thought was interesting. But then this whole idea of, of these big forms that are balancing each other all the time. And, and this, you know, compensates for that. And guys, when they're looking at their phone, they kick their hips forward. But that, if you look at the center of gravity, it's the head, the head is kicked forward. And that center of gravity lands right where it's supposed to, but the hips are kicked out. The head's counterbalancing it, like things like that. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes more sense to me. Now. I think it's um, really important to try and see those things as, you know, it's a balancing game. And then we're trying to balance the, 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 the drawing. Like here. What, did I already put one there? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think this. You know, put a big sweep down. That's again a horrible. Put that you know, sweep down, you know, if it, some of them, you know, if it did that, whatever, um, you know, did this, so that means this came out here, I'm assuming, right? It had sort of a small handle to it, but okay, I, that's could, fine. I could add some handle to it. Yeah. No, or did it go over the shoulder here and it was back here and then here, you know, I want, no, most of the time, unless somebody's wearing very tight clothes, this is going to, you know, have some whatever to it. There's going to be a probably something there. It's going to be a seam down here, probably a pull there, maybe one here, maybe. This is, might drop forward. And it's against that, that gravity's pushing it against that. Everybody wears these tight pants now, which I don't like. Then a pocket. You know, is there a pulling out from the crotch? Maybe I don't want to overdo those either. Shoes aren't too bad, but again, we don't really have this. There's usually sort of a, this sort of goes a little like that because the shoe is designed because you have the ball of your foot in the front and then the heel back here, two very distinct areas and then an arch in the middle. So it's designed around that thought, right? Yes. Not, yeah. not that sometimes they're not flat. Like I think Vans slip-ons and stuff are pretty flat. I don't think they go up or anything. So sometimes you do get that. Was this a bag or something back here? Um, no, no, she wasn't holding a bag. That's just like her arm. I have to figure out what that is. You know, and then, you know, if it's just a quick thing, I might just put an indication of just enough of the, the nose, let's say, I'd probably darken the top of the head. I could say it's in shadow to speed it up, you know, and get a fold or two in there. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. This one's a little more successful. And normally I'd say, you know, it's very rigid, but sometimes people are a little more, you know, especially if they're carrying things, you know, their posture might change quite a bit. This... Again, you know, is there any folds in this? I'd like to at least get something in there. This feels like a big collar. It's not too bad. I think this feels like it should be a little bigger. Yeah, she was holding uh, one of her little kids' umbrellas, so it was it was like comedically tiny for her. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> this isn't too bad. I think here. Like sometimes if I have something like a bun, even if it's small, I might make a little bigger statement with it. 
maybe just a little of that here you know this is going to come up to the bun bottom of the nose maybe the mouth a little a little bit of the chin again maybe i'll put some of this into shadow as i can justify it because the whatever you call it this probably would have hung a little more like that Maybe show the other side of the collar a little bit, just to wrap it a little bit. Anything that was in here to break it up. This, a lot of times I'll just put a little indication of that finger, just to give the hand a little, just enough information. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. This, maybe I could show the bottom of the sole a little bit. That's really clunky, but you get the point. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, Mike, thank you, that was really helpful. Okay, now just go. Oh, and another thing I was gonna say, <laughs> when you're throwing these things down, what you might wanna try and do now is you get more and more comfortable, okay? And I know everybody has to step into this at their own pace, I get it. But what I try to do when I'm doing this, like if I'm knocking this in, is I try and just go, okay, there's the, there's the head, there's this. There's that. And I'm trying right off the bat to get really pretty loose with it. Now, when you get comfortable with it, right? Because what I like to do, and some of this is just experience, I get it, is I want to, um, I want to throw it down pretty loose and then I'll refine what I want to refine. Does that make sense? Yes. So that'll help, hopefully help you get a little looser. It's almost, have you taken life drawing? Not yet. Okay, one of the things will beat you over the head with is drawing through the form, gesture. We're sort of doing that same idea, right? Yes. And what I like is when you, if you haven't taken life drawing yet and you come in here, I'm hoping that now you're going to have a plugged in thing into life drawing where you're going, okay, I've been doing this from life. I've been doing this in the real world. Now I'm going to come into this academic environment and I'm going to immediately kind of hopefully know how to sort of connect those two things, right? Yeah. Because what happens a lot in life drawing, it's super academic, okay? And, and, that's, and that's fine. You know, you need to learn all that academic stuff. It's great. Again, I don't know why it's not connected to the real world. Usually it isn't. I'm, I'm guessing usually because the instructor can't do that usually. But I think it needs to go into the real world. Let's do, you know, when everybody starts doing a pretty good job in life drawing, let's go take a field trip. Let's go down the street to drip and let's go draw people, right? And you'll see everybody like disconnect what they've been learning in life drawing and not know how to apply it to real life. You need to do both. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. You want to have that good uh, uh, academic underlying foundation and all that sort of thing and then know how everything you learn and then know how to move it into the real world. If you don't can't move it in the real world, it's useless. And also start hopefully thinking on a lot of these things when somebody's going, you know, doing this very heavy viscom stuff. Like here's a book that I think is interesting for the wrong reasons. Uh, and I'm not saying this to knock them. I'm saying this to, just to hopefully, you know, so you get sort of discerning about what you're looking at from an educational point of view. Okay, so this book here, is called How to Draw, okay? This is written by Scott Robertson. I'm pretty sure he's an industrial design person. Uh, he's the chair of the entertainment design program, I think at Art Center. But I'm pretty you sure he's either, he's either a trans person or a um, industrial design person. Somebody saying something? I think he was like 10 years ago. Oh, he's not anymore? No, he's not. They, he, he stopped doing it after like two years or something. Um, he's probably got too much going on. Yeah. He, he's, he's got a lot of stuff going on. He's, he was transportation designer, I believe, for mm -hmm. sure. 
Yeah. Okay. So this book would be great if you said how to draw for industrial designers. To call this how to draw is totally insane. It's not how to draw. It's how to draw for industrial design. Okay. And everything is sort of really um, sectioned out like this, like this kind of thing, which is great stuff. I'm not saying it's not great stuff. It's not how to draw. Like if you draw like this, if you get this book early on, you're like, oh, cool, it's a drawing book. And you start learning all this stuff, you're going to draw so stiff and so slow and so not intuitively, right? Then add this stuff on later, okay? Because there's nothing wrong with this stuff. You know, when he does these very finished drawings, he constructs them in that way. And that's fine. It's not the way I like to work really, but it's fine. Does that make sense? Yes. And by the way, I'm not saying he's not great at what he does. He is. He's really good at what he does. It's just that this is, I don't like this being put out there as like, here's how to draw. It's like, no, it isn't. Okay. But anyway, he is very good at what he does. And he's a transportation major. So his technology is always going to look pretty believable. And I'm just hopping around looking for things that I'm trying to find things now or because, you know, okay, again, here, where's Catherine? I'm here. Okay, so we still have this anime language creeping into this, yeah? I haven't watched anime in like months. I know, it doesn't matter. It's the language is there. Does that make sense? This right yeah. here, these eyes, that's total anime stuff. Not as much there. And these, and like this. I like that, my last week pages better. Okay, but here's my point I like my pages if you're looking at this observationally when I look at this and because I've done this with life drawing and everything when people are making stylized marks like if you're looking at somebody from life their eyes don't look anything like that does that make sense yeah uh, from a realistic per, uh, standpoint okay no and, yeah you're right and, and it's also it's not just anime by the way it can be whatever somebody's into okay I've had students that are totally into Chris Sanders totally into Glenn Keane, totally into the Disney style, totally into, you know, whatever, you know, thing they're into. And yeah, then they've I'm, learned, I'm they've I'm learned how to do style. that from that thing. So then they go, oh, well, that's, and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That is how Glenn Keane stylizes a face for animation. That is not what you were looking at in mm -hmm. the moment. Does that make sense? And I have trouble, like, yeah, and I have trouble to, trying a full body too. Yeah, everybody does. Because I feel like I still draw me. And those are the things, and everybody, you know, I do this all the time, right? I, I'll look at my sketchbooks and I go, holy crap, you're drawing three-quarter view headshots all the time. And then I'll force myself to stop doing that and go, now go in and draw the whole body now. Um, you know, go in and push the poses, go in and push stylization, go in and put whatever, whatever I'm doing, right? Right now I'm doing the opposite. I'm getting very observational. I'm just doing a bunch of things right now to sort of push my skill set further or whatever you want to call it, Okay. So in here, again, right. you look at the relationship of the size of this eye. Another thing, and this is really common, is this section here becomes too narrow. There's no cranium back yeah. there. Does that make sense? So again, yeah. what I look at here is once I go, another thing, this, these glasses were probably pulled out a little way from the head. Then the nose is under there. That's fine. Now, again, how is this connecting? So now you're telling me it's connecting just on the top, which means this would be hanging like that, not like that. Oh, okay, yeah. So all this is, from what I've seen of it anyway, is this sort of does that, and it sort of does that. And there's the ear now. Now I go, how far is the ear to this hairline? Probably a little more like that. Get that hair a little more organized. This probably came out like that. This is probably actually somewhere there. This neck probably came back a little more. 
This is probably a little higher on his neck. He was walking by, so I just tried to look at him. He was walking by, so I was just trying to take a good look at him so I can draw yeah. tell him. That's what you want to do. You want to sort of, okay, so just pushing his proportions out a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, and then, you know, this inside. So here, I mean, this is a gigantic eye in the relationship to the head. So this would actually be somewhere in here, probably, right? And there's an eyelash, then the bottom of the nose here. And again, this doesn't this doesn't go this doesn't go up like that. That can't happen because you're telling me this is sitting down and then this is sitting up here. So you're telling me this is floating independent of gravity and all that, right? That's actually gonna go. That's actually gonna go to the ear, and then this pulls here. And then this pulls there, something like that. This goes over the nose, so it's gonna come down here. And it's pulling away from the ear, which is the tension point. Does that make sense? Yes. This is gonna dip in a little bit. Eyes still a little big, but that's okay. You know, and then, you know, map the hair out. This is again, the cranium, there's a little more cranium back here. I had trouble like drawing the eyes. Okay, so what I would do is go in and look at and simplify. So, because we're not doing an anatomy thing here. What we're trying to do is really find some believable shorthand for, um, for this. Um, And, and there's some really good stuff in, let me see if I can find a good one, in the breakdown of these things. Let's try this. Sometimes these kind of breakdowns will really kind of give you an insight into things or they're kind of epiphany moments for me when I was learning all this, like this. This simple breakdown of that ball of the nose in relation to the wing and the in the bridge of the nose. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now you might want to just look at those things because they're really helpful. Like this, the bottom plane of the nose, this overall shape here to see it. So he's breaking it down in a lot of different ways. He does the same thing with eyes. Let's see. This is Michael Hampton, who I think's book is really good. And I'm not saying, you know, go completely down the rabbit hole of anatomy. I mean, I think it's a good thing to look at. Obviously, we're not an anatomy class. So let's look at this one. And if you look at this side view right there, you can see that I'm doing a simplified version of that, correct? Right there. Yes, I see it now. Okay, because I'm thinking of it the way I think of this. And I probably said this before is there's, you know, there's a socket. The reason I like to think of it this way is there is a socket in there and anatomy. And, and I'm really looking at the shapes around the eye to create the eye. And if I look at it in a side view, there's the eye. You're seeing this little slit in the front is what you're actually seeing. There's your eye uh, lid. There's your bottom one. So you're, you know, but there's a big ball back here. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And that's how I'm always, you know, and then the brow comes in here, basically, right? So it's sort of how I'm thinking of it. And then again, like we talked about before, you know, if it's a younger person, I'm not going to put a lot of, actually, this would come out here. Um, I'm not going to put a lot of information around the eyes. It's a younger person, you know, as soon as they get a little older, those bags get a little more noticeable. You can see it already aged her a little bit. But, you know, I don't want to go overboard with it. Just putting a little more information around that eye ages that eye up a little bit, ages the character up a little bit. This would probably come down here a little more, you know, hang on. you know, down here a little more. Maybe the hairstyle would become a little more conservative. Who knows? Then I got an excuse to put that pulling up towards the um, hair.
so on and so forth. That makes sense? Yeah. So when you're throwing down a whole body, so you're sticking mostly, see, this is very stylized, right? Yeah. Very stylized. Are these from life? Yeah, they are. Okay, so you're you're applying sort of a language to everything. Get out of that language and start looking at what you're looking at. Does that make sense? I'll do my best too. Huh? I'll do my best. Okay, good. These are better. Are these yours? No, they were my first paint. Okay, these feel like these feel more like observational. Where are you at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this ear is probably going to come forward a little bit. I can show that cheek mass. I'm not frozen, right? No. Oh. No, you're good. Okay, and then this, I want a little more information there. Mm -hmm. Might be a little fold right there. Yeah, there yes. was. A maybe there's something there. Maybe that little fold there. You know, and, and I'm not there, so I don't know exactly what was there. Then this hair, was what kind of hair was it? Uh, kind of like curly. Okay. So then I'm going to look at this edge and I'm going to look at what kind of curls there were. You know, what kind of curly hair did he have? You know, and then I'm going to go, you know, can I use that language of the curls to start to gather light and things down here? So I'll make it more dense and less dense as it goes towards the light. Did he have glasses on? If he did, they'd be out there somewhere. This one's a pretty good start. Maybe okay. I can see a little bit of the chin. So I'm just trying to find places where I can get a little bit of um, structure in there. It's probably something. There's going to be a seam right there. There always is one here. You know, are his hands here? Can I get one hand in here? Maybe move this back. Make sure that this is a, you know, a solid, <laughs> make sure that's a solid shape there. I can get a hand in here, wherever that was, maybe his elbows down here. And then I have to find where this hand lands. You know, when you're drawing technology, you don't want to go. See how that doesn't work? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, you want to go like that then a nice sweep when i'm doing stuff that has to be a little more manufactured looking i'll usually sweep these lines you know when i turn my board and, and then once i put it in then i'll come in here and like round these edges and start to loosen it up a little bit yeah all right yeah but this this page feels more observational now look at the hair and don't go okay well, number one that was my first thing yeah, number one, this is in, this is random mark making on her hair. We don't want to do that. Okay. This? Hang on. So look at her hair and go, where does it break up? You know, it's probably a little there. How does it end? You know, is there big masses here that I can break up with just some line and things? How does it end down here? He was, Same thing here. There's a he head back in there. Away, so I didn't put much detail. It's not just a flat shape. He was far away. Right? Okay. But it's not just a flat shape. Squint down and go, where's the lights yeah. and darks? If that's all I have, right? All right. So this page, go more this direction. Yeah? Where'd you go? Got it. Sorry, I was on mute. Animate makes me crazy. I don't want anime anymore. I know, but it just I that language, that visual ago. language of it, it just makes me crazy. Let me jump around here. I remember when I was younger, I was watching it on the TV show and my mom walked in and said, I don't know why they decide to make the eyes so ugly. I was just so caught off guard. It's, it's what it is, is and it's like, and I want to make this clear. It's like, it's not just anime, but one thing about anime is it's really from a design perspective, it's really cheesy and it's really 
amateur-y looking. And I get it. If you like it, I'm not saying that it's bad to like it. I'm not saying that. I mean, I'm sure I like, um, we just watched Cobra Kai. Come on. I mean, that's totally cheesy. Um, but don't, don't pull that language into your, into your drawing language. It's, it just looks really cheeseball to people who aren't like an art director or something who's got a pretty sophisticated eye is going to go, oh God, this is in their book. You think this is an expression? This is not an expression. You know, because half the anime expressions I see in still images, I go, I don't even know what that expression means. Like these giant smiles, the weird stiff poses. It's like, I don't know what this, I don't know what this is saying from if I just look at it visually. Does that make sense? Yeah, I must like I want to be a background painter to draw like, you know, houses and props and stuff like that. For background painting? Yeah, I want to be a background artist. Okay, well, don't look at... I like drawing props and stuff. Yeah, don't look at anime. And I know everybody always shows... I know, I look at um, art cartoons. I, I look at, like, gravity fall stuff and how they stuff. Yeah, but what, what I would stuff. say, if you want to be a background painter and that kind of thing, then, see, this is what I'm trying to get, and this is something I've been really thinking about lately. You got to get into... Um, you got to... If you want to get into whatever, background painting, right? Don't go and, not, and look at background painting. That's great. And get excited about it. That's great. But what you really need to do is go, what's the fun, fundamental foundational skill set that I need to have to be a background painter? So then I would go, I'm getting me a, uh, at least a watercolor book and some watercolor. I'm going out and I'm doing tons of studies from life. I'm going to go to UC, uh, USC campus. They've got really cool buildings and, and architecture. I'm going to go there and I'm just going to do a bunch of painting, start figuring out color and brushwork and all that. Then I'm going to go and start doing that in oil. I'm going to become a plain air painter. Solid painting skills, solid color skills, solid drawing skills. Sol that's all the stuff you need. What's going on, with, especially with entertainment design, is students go, oh, I want to do, um, I want to do concept design. Like, uh, I don't know, you know, all that mo monsters and robots and all this stuff. So what do they do? They go look at concept designers. They start copying that. Okay, so now you've got a half-assed, crappy, surface-level, fanboy, nonsense uh, skill set, which is useless. It's unemployable. Instead of doing that, you should go, what, what does uh, John Navarez have that makes him so damn good? Uh, monster draftsmanship, monster design, monster fundamentals. That's what's great about him. And imaginative, great ideas. Go after those fundamentals. Forget about that because that's the fundamentals are what get you to that. If you're copying from a surface level concept design or whatever it is you wanna do, it's probably not gonna happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Cause somebody's, this is what like people don't understand is that the, the, the sophistication level and the eyes, the eyes that people have that are gonna look at your stuff at a high level place, man, they are gonna spot cheesy nonsense right off the bat. You're never even gonna get in the door. Because they're gonna they're gonna filter okay. you right out. Like when I got portfolios, wherever, I just surface. I go okay. I'm gonna sit down. To, I'm gonna go through all these portfolios, you know, PDFs or whatever. Pull them up. If I saw something, I could see it first or second image. I go oh forget it. Pull up the next one. I oh, forget it. Pull up the next one. Okay, this one might be okay. Put that in my folder to look at. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. I you'd go through like forty of these things and go forget it. None of these are even worth looking at. Because you'd immediately see um, amateurish drawing, amateurish design ideas, like unbelievable. I, mean, I always put tech stuff in it. And you go, yeah, I don't believe any of this tech crap because you didn't think this through and you don't even understand how to design this. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's about drawing, painting, design, all that stuff. It's not just about going, oh, I'm going to copy this thing. The copying is never going to it's not, it's not that it's not bad to break those things down and look at them why they're so great and why they're designed so well. That's all great. But you can't just stay in that space all the time. Does that make sense? Yes. Any of us. Oh, Eli. I wanted to look at Eli's stuff. Where's Eli? I'm right here. I don't think you're right there. <laughs> I think you're over there. I was looking at yours last week because we didn't bring him up. Did I send you an email? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, you did. Um, I missed last class. I set my alarm as PM instead of AM. So I just slept through the whole thing. Sorry. 
You slept till you slept till two o'clock. I did actually. Wow, really? <laughs> My sleep schedule is a mess. So is mine, but I, I I don't know why, but I tend to wake up at like six. I think it's just because I'm old. For some reason, as you get older, you sleep less, which is totally makes no sense to me. Okay, there was uh did I say what I wanted to talk about about him? Um you just said I like what's going on here or something like that. Okay. Yeah. What I liked about him is that you're getting pretty loose. Like what I like, these are are these the first ones? Yeah. Wait, how, how could you tell? <laughs> because you can you see them get looser and looser. Ah, uh, I see. Somebody just asked me, um, how you can tell when somebody's drawn from photographs and it's like, cause they look like they were drawn from photographs. You know what <laughs> I mean? They look flat, they look stiff. They look, it's just very obvious. You know what I mean? It's like, you didn't make that pose up and you didn't push it or anything. Like, if, you know, you can use a photograph and really push the pose and just use it as a jumping off point and it'll be successful. But if you're like just copying a photograph it's gonna look like you copied a photograph. Mm -hmm. And then there's people who, by the way, are using, like Drew Struzan would use projection. You know, he project those images on there and basically trace them. But that guy's a master monster draftsman. He knows how to adjust that. And he knows how to do that. That's not easy to do, by the way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can't stand tracing stuff and all that. It's just like, then you have to work so hard to get it to look more natural, you know? Yeah. Um, I think projecting's a little better because you're not just literally tracing, you know? But, you know, he's going to make those hands a little bigger. He's going to push that something. He's going to do this, can do that. He's, he knows how to make it look natural, okay? Because he knows how to draw. Mm -hmm. See, I like this kind of stuff where you're really just knocking things in. Or this. That's a good uh, structure to start hanging your, your stuff on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. But do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's a really good, that's kind of what I'm looking for is like this, even this here, like it's starting to happen in here, here. You know, what I love is when you can start seeing what you're seeing here. Mm -hmm. Does that feel good when you do that? That should feel good. Yeah. Like whenever I kind of panic and I see people walking really fast, I'm like, oh, I just kind of like, they're kind of clustered together anyways. So I just kind of like. Yeah. We're going to talk about that today, actually. But this you're starting to get it now, you know, pull it a little more into the hair idea here. Mm -hmm. Let's break that up a little. That probably, you know, I'd break that head a little bit. Maybe a little more of that cheek mass, just stuff like that. It's really, you know, there's probably some sort of fold here. I know I always go to that fold, but it's just, it's what's in my head right now. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then it's very easy, like this right here is great, because this is what I kind of want, because then I can easily put my, now you've got a nice loose structure to start putting things over. And it's going to get way more natural looking. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of, this is kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit today. This is fun. Now, don't just did it at that, right? Right. You know, what was this doing? I don't know. That ear is probably going to go forward a little bit. Again, you got her cheek in there, which is nice. That neck. Now I just, you know, put a couple of things to elaborate on it. And see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is exactly the step that we're trying to make. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that nice, loose structure, right? Mm -hmm. then these proportionally are getting a little weird right yeah these are pretty loose see again just watch your proportion here they're getting a little squat right mm -hmm. yeah you're almost there man this is cool i like this hair thank you I hate that everybody wears these damn tight pants. They're so uninteresting. <laughs> right? Well, I think they're, I don't think they're all that attractive either. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, maybe I'm just saying that because there's no way in hell I could ever wear those again. <laughs> like way past my duty. I don't like wearing them either, though. I don't like tight huh? What is it? 
I, I don't like tight fitting clothes. I like loose. Yeah. This is a nice one. This is a nice one. These are all from life, right? Mm -hmm. They feel like they are. Where's this at here? Um, it was like downtown um, Las Vegas, like on the strip. There was kind of like a part where um, there's just like a bunch of like food shops and like a little kind of like an outdoor mall. Yeah, that's a good spot. Those mm -hmm. kind of things are good spot. Be careful with this sort of random indication of folds. Mm -hmm. I want more. So what it tends to happen if you do that with folds, you're sort of giving me this sort of surface thing, right? Yeah. Where this is actually going to have some in, you know, a little more interior something. Mm -hmm. Like maybe that's pulling over a little. And again, you know, you get these folds that pull like that. You can get other ones too that pull this way. I mean, there's a lot of different ways it can happen. I'm mm -hmm. always trying to get you guys to sort of get the basic ones down. Then you can sort of vary it. Is this a down jacket? Um, down jacket. Yeah. Like those puffy jackets. Yeah. It's like one of those like puffy jackets, like the ribbing or whatever. Yeah. So I would probably now push this out a little bit because they, you know, they puff. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to overdo it. That's a little overdone, but you know, just give me enough of that information that it's a puffy jacket. They don't call them down jackets anymore. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not cultured enough. <laughs> to know. I don't think that's a cultural. They do. They still call them. They what? Uh, they, they still call them. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And then this hair feels very random mark making. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see. Again, this is going to split somewhere. So what I'm noticing a lot with um, the mask thing is that people are sort of just throwing them on there and they're not thinking about how they attach or anything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has. Like this guy, look at, where does this mask go? It goes down here. Oh, he was he was actually wearing like a oh, bandana and pulled it over his nose. Yeah. yeah. It's still probably going to come up here a little bit, but maybe not. A um, little more top of his head. He's a little Neanderthal. Maybe that little that little divot right there, the brow line. Because mm -hmm. see, again, these are really easy to work over because there's so much good stuff in them already. Yeah. What do you mm -hmm. want to do? What do you make? What's your major? Um. It like. I just, I kind of want to get like an illustration certificate and I also want to get um, entertainment arts too. Do you know what you want to do? I just, I want to draw and make money. So okay. <laughs> anything in the industry, like right. I'll take it. That was, that was basically what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got out of school, I'm like, just give me a job. Like <laughs> design stuff or drawing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually a healthy attitude to have. Now, I think sometimes, you know, get a good sellable skill set, right? Yeah, I just want to become well-rounded. So then if yeah. I do. Yeah, because yeah, then if you can go in as like a generalist with a hire, you can go, hey, um, we need somebody to do props or whatever. Um, you know, go, okay, cool. And then you get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. Then you can get in there and, you know, they might see like, wow, you know, you got a lot of really. And then you can pull this, the moves, you know, that everybody I don't know if everybody does, but like you leave your sketchbook open near your desk, like you're just sitting there drawing. But what you really did is leave it open on a really cool page that shows something else you can do that they didn't know you can do. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. that, and, and if you got a great sketchbook or something, man, people usually love that because it really shows like, wow, these are cool designs. These are cool drawings. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it shows like a well rounded. There was a guy who did it. The, the wrong way at Disney stores, a guy named Pedro. And he would like, he had a little pedestal that he put his sketchbook on, which was like totally pretentious. Does that make sense? <laughs> and everybody was just like, Pedro's an asshole, man. You know, he's full of himself because he's really full of himself. I see. And he also wasn't nearly as good as he thought he was. Where's this one at? That's kind of interesting. This one. I think I was at a coffee shop in um, Costa Mesa. 
I kind of went to a couple different places this week, so. You got to try and get off this mountain today. It's going to be a pain in the ass. Oh, where are you at again? Lake Arrowhead. Oh, geez. Okay. This memorial thing is in Orange County, which I don't care about that. It's just that because it just finished snowing like last night. So there's certain spots that I know of that can be tricky to get out of and then blah, blah, blah. So are these going chronologically? Wait, um, th they're eight. labeled, yeah. So they're literally going from page one to page eight, right? Yeah, that's my that's my page one right there. This one's interesting. Hello. Hang on. This one. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. I didn't love her, but really, I like I, getting... I like this that. That I since what we talked about last week about like movement and like not not that that's like the focus, but I was trying to incorporate more and getting inside the drawings more as opposed yeah. to just and and what you're, the exterior line. And what's really fun to do to me, for me anyway, is to do you know is to look for these like gestures that you can push. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know because you want to you know you can exaggerate them and. Like, okay, so here we're getting very, now we need to break this up. You know, did this come out at all? Um, it actually, it was, uh, it was kind of a fitted coat on her with like a puffy collar and a puffy like little sleeve thing. If it's that, it was like, if it's that much, then it's probably got, if it's, if it's hugging her body that much, there's got to be some kind of elastic down here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's probably not just a regular coat's not going to hug you like that unless it's designed to mm -hmm. uh, now it can hug your body but it's going to have something that's pulling it in here probably this probably just get up dye that a little bit this is pretty good this isn't telling me what's happening what's happening there um she had a clip in her hair and then the hair was like poofing out so was it a you know it was like a messy kind of top ish thing like pulled up oh. so was know? it more like there's a thing here and then her hair sort of doing that like okay hang strands on strands almost can you see me yeah it was like it was like this oh okay so it's more of a um it was like messy not necessarily a messy bun but yeah, just so like i put a bun or whatever and just look at how it breaks up and just put that in there Okay. And then this, you know, I might give it a little bit of my ear. This stuff's going to pull up to that hair, which is a nice thing to have. You got this pretty good. It's this is gonna, usually drops way back here. Then this, you know, again, where were the folds at in here? There's probably a compression fold right there. This is going to go back around, which you did a little bit. I'd push that a little more. She's probably not holding her phone like that, right? Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. probably holding her phone like that, more than likely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I know what you're doing. She might've had her thumb over this part of it. You know, she might've had it like this. I mean, she mm -hmm. might have mm -hmm. like that and doing that, yeah. But it's, right now it's feeling like this. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which is, you know. It's hard to get in there. With the with trick like with it, like the hand. trick with uh, this probably comes out a little more. Um, the trick with like the phone thing, this feels like it should come out more. Uh, I think this shoulder's probably over here a little more. Um, the trick of the phone thing is there's like four or five kind of basic ways that people hold them. It's really one, but there's little variations on it. Some people hold it this way and they do this. Some people hold it this way and they do everything this way. And then if you can kind of grab that, you know, then you can kind of plug it in. You know, somebody's sitting there doing it for a while, do a couple studies of it. So you just sort of know how it happens because it is kind of a weird position. And then they tend to, you know, look at it for a minute and then they don't. And then they start doing this and then they, you know, and that way, if you sort of have a little bit of a graphic language for it, you can just kind of plug it in. Right. Right. Okay. 
Like there's certain behaviors that are just everybody does. You know what I mean? Drinking coffee. Yeah holding a cocktail, you know, there's just certain ways that people do those things. So I just try and kind of catalog them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This one's pretty good. I like the way you blocked out this hand right here. Oh, thank you. And then maybe here, and these are little things that I make a decision on where I go, this hat's coming down. Maybe I'll put that little bit of that little under part there to give it some depth. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. See, okay, that's where I struggle with because I go like, is this a completely side-on view? And would you see that? But like in reality, you don't really see perfectly pro- uh, profile. So I don't. I always, I always just battle with myself on that. What I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to give it like same thing we do with like you hear me all the time with sleeves. If there's a sleeve here, you know, I might wrap it around a little like that, right there. Mm-hmm. That's going to give it a little bit of, um, uh, that's a bad fold. That's going to give it a little bit of wrapping around the arm. I can do the same thing with the, the bottom of the pants, you know, where the shoe comes out here. And this is an exaggeration, but, you know, that little part where it drags behind the, or loops around the foot, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So same thing with these kind of hats, because they don't have a lot of shape. I mean, they have that sort of shape like that, which is fine. But then I know that that little brim comes under there, something like that. So mm-hmm. I'll put a little bit of it in there just to give it a little bit of, um, so it looks a little more three-dimensional. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a little more interesting, just a little more interesting. Right. Here, get into these interiors. Okay. Think more like this. This is good. The way you block that hand in. I like that. Be careful with your ellipse. This ellipse is a little too, it should be more like that. A little narrower, actually a little narrower than that, probably more like that. I'd have to be there to exactly know, but that the ellipse. Okay. So if you have the ellipse where he's drinking it like this, if I see that much of an open ellipse, you're telling me his glass is doing that. Which you can't do. Mm-hmm. You can't drink mm-hmm. this way and tilt it towards me. It's this way. So it might even be if I'm on eye level with him. What do I do with my pen? If I'm on eye level with him, might just be almost flat. But always okay. look at that ellipse. How open? That's probably about it right there. Actually, maybe a little. Always look at the the opening of the ellipse, even if like if they have like if there's a cup on this table. You know, this if this is totally flat, what that's telling me is that's right where my eye level is. Correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I always look for is I go how open and I and sometimes I go back and look at old drawings. I go, shit, those ellipses are off because I just wasn't paying attention. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and then I look at how open is this ellipse if I'm up top looking down. This ellipse is going to be pretty open because I'm up here looking down at it, right? Right. If I'm, you know, closer on the eye level to them, it's going to be maybe more like that, where I just see a little bit of it. And then this one might get a little flatter as it goes up. You know, if you have those, whatever those are called, those coffee, that's a little wider. You know, but I'm thinking about that because I want, you know, that's a little indicator of the perspective in the eye level, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I always want to um, be on top of those things this probably has a little bit of a kick right there more cranium so look from this ear Mm -hmm. back to the back of the head how deep is it does the hair stop right there because a lot of times there's a little distance between the ear and the start of the hair right Mm -hmm. but this uh this is real common i think i said this when we first started this class um this cranium everybody just puts too too it's too narrow back here there's actually quite a bit of cranium. When you start looking at it, you'll go, wow. I just did it the other day. I was drawing somebody and I threw it down and I really looked at their, where their cranium went. And I go, holy smokes, there's like way more volume back there than I threw down. You know what I mean? Right, right. That's something that I, I even I noticed in myself. And I always feel like I don't have enough room to go in on the face because I've smushed everything right. together. But so that's why I, when no. you're doing this, like when you're knocking in a face, which we're talking about a lot. 
uh, when you knock it in the face, I'm sitting here and I'm just doing this really loose. Here's the eyes. Here's the bottom of the nose. I think the ear. Fo I always have to adjust the ear too. For some reason, I always put it up too high, and I put the. I just do a lot of weird things that I have to adjust. Mm -hmm. But then you know, and then I go okay. The mouth's about there. There's the chin. What kind of chin do they have? Then it comes up. There it is. There's the eye, and then I go. You know. Oh wait a minute. This actually comes way out here. Let's say. There's that, and then I just you know once I know that the basic proportions are in there then I'll make a commitment. I don't commit until I know that my light ghosted stuff is working. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is why I was looking at when I was talking about Eli's, what I like about that is she's starting to see that like really loose structure there and not totally committing to it until she kind of throws down the loose structure and then builds her, her uh, drawing over that loose structure. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a real, specific thing that i can see when i start seeing people hit it there's a bunch of things like that there's like little draftsman -y things and little design things i've had a lot of students where i get excited about something they're doing and they're like really what's a big deal and it's like okay you don't see what i'm seeing like i'm seeing where you're where you're headed like mm -hmm. you're hitting these mm -hmm. really cool things they might be subtle maybe you're not feeling them yet but i'm seeing where they're going like you're hitting these little draftsman -y things little design okay. things. does that make sense yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they don't even see it, which always, and, and I get it, you know, but, you know, because you're, you're, you know, all of you as students, you're going, I want to do that, you know, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm, I want to draw like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, this incremental thing, um, but usually you can get some pretty big leaps in here because we're doing it so much, hopefully, and if you're re repeating it enough and we're sort of making you aware enough, um, you'll hopefully hit a lot of milestones quickly. Okay. Okay. And somebody just said this, I was listening to, I've been going down this YouTube rabbit hole because usually I don't look at YouTube all that much. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to watch a long form thing on my phone, but obviously I can watch on TV now. And I've just been looking at all these interviews with people. It's really interesting to hear people articulate the same ideas. Sometimes I think they articulate it way better than I do and I'll pull their quote or whatever and go, yeah, that's exactly what I've been trying to say, but they're saying it better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see how we have this outline structure of the head now, right? Yeah. And then, you know, we got to get into these natural poses. That's just work. Okay, so look. Things like this. Look how pointy these edges are on this ellipse. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, more than likely, a sleeve is not going to hang like that. Yeah, yeah. It's going to pull against something. Right? If I pull yeah. it back here, it might come. See, it's coming out that way now. But it's mm -hmm. locked against here. Now, once mm -hmm. in a while that can happen, but most of the time it's not going to, because if you have a sleeve out here, it can't float like that. It's going to drop here because that's just gravity, right? Right, right. Yes. I think that was like kind of me, like, just go. Just, you know what I mean? Like, no, just I think you should. And do then, it, you, know, you, know? you can go back. And by the way, I don't want you guys over laboring on these things. I want you to just make new ones. Um, let, you know, later on, you know, you can throw a piece of trace over it and maybe refine it a little bit or, or fix little things. <laughs> what I don't want you to do, though, is go, you know, bring these back and then just labor over them. Because then instead of, that's not what I want you doing. I want you going, oh, that sleeve's not right on that. Okay, boom, I'll fix that the next round I go and draw more people. Because I want the miles. I don't want this, like, fixating on a drawing. Because then you're going back to this stiff thinking that i'm not into at all and mm -hmm. i don't think it helps mm -hmm. does that make mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then here there's got to be some kind of something that was happening pulling from there somewhere okay you know you could put that indication of the seam then the seam jumps over here or it'll jump you know let's say it's here it'll jump maybe like that because it's going over these folds mm -hmm. this is a little bigger, probably. It's a good shape for a foot, though. Again, watch your ellipse here. Mm -hmm. And then this is, was it a wine glass? Yeah. So, you know, it's got an, usually has some sort of a fairly elegant curve here. Yeah, it was one of those smaller ones on the top, though. Yeah, that's fine. You know, and then I like to put a little bit of the liquid in there. I just don't let it touch the edges. Right. You know, I'll look. And then down here, what usually happens is you'll get just some 
sort of dark reflections. I'll just look for those, ref like right there, you'll get some, wherever the glass sort of gathers up and gets thicker, usually you'll get some dark reflections in there. Okay. Watch your lips here. So when you're doing ellipses, nice and clean, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can see I'm not getting them that clean right now because I'm not turning my board. I need to turn it. And I also need to be warmed up. When I'm not warmed up, forget it. And I'm not that warmed up yet. Here is a good opportunity where you might have been able to go, was there a little bit of a cast shadow off that nose? Mm, okay. Uh, a little more information on the glasses. You don't want to overdo glasses. This ear probably broke that a little more, probably. Yeah. This, here's the upper lip. This is another thing that you can do here just to give it volume. That's a bad lip, but I'm just going to leave it. Um, and then this little divot under here, that's what defines the bottom lip. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And then this feels way out a little. Feels like it should be. You know, I usually break that little button there. I might make this little band a little thicker so it's more, you know, breaks that edge. These could be, this whole top part of the head could be in sh a little bit of shadow because I got that, you know, maybe that little indication of that there. That's a little too much, but that's okay. You know, and then sort of what you're doing here, this probably was there. This is going to wrap over that. A little bit of a that you might push that deltoid a little again we're not doing an anatomy class but if it's there you know that's a real easy shape it's like a cap right on your shoulder oh, okay so i might just bump it a little bit because it's not always that defined or anything it just depends reshape this head a little bit so on and so forth You know, this, there's sort of that thing in there. Knock these down a little bit. You know, it looks like he's a little older, so I'd probably get a little bit of that probably. Mm. That's always hard for me. I feel like it always looks like, um, like, like those two lines above the, the cheek or in that like nose area always looks like it's like out of place whenever I place that line down. Just throw it down, you'll hit it. Okay. Okay. What you got to be careful of is that people do this. They go, they put this really hard sort of, you don't do that. You kind of, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything is, a, um, everything you're doing is, is a build. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm always sneaking up on it. Like I'm, you know, and when I'm super warmed up and I got the drawing like knocked in, like just what I just talked about where you're just kind of throwing down the overall shape language. And I look at it and I go, okay, I think that's pretty good. I always have to adjust it a little bit, refine it a little bit. And then I go, boom, now I've got a roadmap. So now I can jump in here and I'm a lot more confident because I know my, my overall big shapes are all balanced and working pretty good. So right. now I'm pretty confident to go in and like knock in that eyeshadow, knock in the, you know, whatever, right? This, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Start to really pull the drawing together. But it's really key that that first throwdown of basic shapes is all balanced and proportional, you know, and whatever it needs mm -hmm, to be, mm -hmm. you know, gestural, whatever it is. And that's why it's just, you know, it's good to get this super loose sort of throw down and then you can refine it. Because I've gotten students, they go, well, I want to do this really tight stuff, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that's fine. And then I go, well, look, you know, and, you know, I'll go through it and go, well, if I want to do it, you know, take this to really tight, here's how I do it. I just keep building it. I just keep tightening it up. You know what I mean? And yeah, I could take mm -hmm. any kind of sketch to a finished drawing, but you can't unloosen or you can't loosen an uptight, stiff drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that and that that moving away from that uptight, stiff nonsense is uh, it's key. Otherwise, nothing's ever going to look believable or or like look. I like this guy's stuff. I think it's really, you know. Because oh. I think this guy has really great design and drag. I think he's a good example of all these things pulling together. Why 
is he on there? I said, I don't get that. What's he got where I want? Hang on. I think we've talked about this guy a little bit. Like, look at this one. See what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean? That's just great. It's great design. It's great composition. I love that pose, you know, that all the poses. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, <clears throat> it's, and then his design stuff. So this is a good example. He's working in the entertainment industry, but it's a very illustrative, not viscom skill skill set, right? Yeah. And again, I'm not knocking Viscom. We'll talk about that, I don't know, in a couple of weeks probably. But um, just great, you know. So he's gone in there and done like super light, laying it down, simple stuff, right? And then would, he'll yeah. go in. Yeah. See, now that's, that's where I struggle. And obviously he, he has more mileage than me. So like, yeah. yeah. But um, I struggle with like going back and I still want it to look rough and messy like that, you know, like it's still complete and like looks nice, but yeah, exactly. there's that roughness. And then when I go back in, I start to like line work okay. and I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> a lot of this is what you just said. He has a lot more mileage on you. But again, my key thing about this class or any class that I do really, but this for, for this one, especially is methodology and repetition mileage, right? Okay. Yeah. Because if you don't, because do, I hear this all the time from like students, you know, in general. Um, and I was always thinking about this before I, I started teaching again, right? Because I, I think I've told you I didn't teach for like 15 years or something. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd always be thinking about it. And one of the things that I always see is, is if you, if some programs did get the idea of repetition into the program, which is great, but then I'd look at the drawings and go, your drawings suck. And you're just repeating the same crappy you don't have any, you don't have any methodology. You're just making bad drawings over and over again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. got to be a methodology there because that's what speeds the whole process up is that part of it. And then you doing tons of repetition. Like if you get into a sketchbook, man, and you just draw and draw and draw and you're really focused and trying to get better and better and better, you know, you are going to get better in a very, a much shorter time frame. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And forget, you know, Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. No, it's all about this right now. Cause that is right. going to feed that thing that you want to do. Okay. Right. Right. Go in and like, you know, as soon as we can get product design up, go into that class and go, okay, how do I, I'll go into it and go, I don't want to do toy design because I want to do one that's toy design. Right. But based on product design, right. Cause it is. Product mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason I'm picking toys is because it's just an interesting object, right. Or an interesting product, but don't, you know, necessarily go, well, I don't want to take a, I don't care about designing toys or whatever. It's like, it's not about that. It's about designing something for the real world. And you need that knowledge a little bit because if you're just making stuff up and then, you know, you send that off to the model department or something, they go, dude, this, we can't model this thing. You know what I mean? We can't yeah. manufacture this thing. We can't move this thing. We can't rig this thing. This thing's a mess. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're gone. You know, you got to have, you got to, if you're going to go into that sort of world. Now, if you're doing a kid's book, it's just got to be believable. It just exists on the page. Boom, done. Right. 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 Um, but like when I'm doing a kid's book, like right now, um, I'm th I'm not just thinking about a kid's book. I'm going, okay, this thing more or less could totally bomb, but maybe not. Maybe it does fairly well. Cause my thinking is like, okay, I want to do fairly well. Why? Cause I want to license this stuff. I want to go to mm -hmm. somebody and go, mm -hmm. Hey, let's do a plush. Let's do, this let's do that with a licensor or license right and go i that's where my brain goes i don't go like oh it's kids book i go no it's kids book and then i can do product and i can do this and i can use the platform for that and i can do this now i'm not going to design the book like all around designing product but i do know if i was going to do product i know how to do that does that make sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then and then if you go into film or whatever well like, if you look at the first Transformers movie, and I might have said this, I saw it on a plane because I didn't really want to watch it. I saw it on a long, like, 20-hour flight, right? So I was watching mm -hmm. it, and, and the first one, at least, number one, I thought the design was super overcomplicated. It was hard visually to figure out what was going on, which I thought was a weird choice. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there were so many shots, as I remembered, I mean, that was a long time ago, that looked to me like it, there was a lot of shots that looked super cheated in that movie. Okay. So like they, and it's weird because they never came into the movie and slowed anything down because I think if you would have done that, it sort of would have filled in the information. And as I remembered, every time there was an action, it was like, whoosh, 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 and then the hands doing something. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just 100%. looking at going, you're cheating that because that design is so overly complicated. Yeah. Kind of doesn't look like it works right to me. It bugged me a lot. I mean, it was a stupid movie anyway, but it bugged me. The design <laughs> of it. I can't watch movies like that. Like, this is too dumb. No, I agree. Cause I, and I mean, I was, I don't even remember maybe about 16, 17 when those movies came out. Um, so I wasn't really thinking critically, but I just remember going, I think it was the second one that I watched because the first one was okay. But the second one, I was like, it just looks like crumbling paper smacking up against each other. And I couldn't distinct mm-hmm. anything. Right. And I was like, this is almost, it's hurting my eyes to watch this because it just, I, it that, doesn't make sense. I just thought it was, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And there's something in my brain that goes, I don't, why did you guys build these robots with like 10,000 pieces? It just doesn't make sense to me. You know, right. and then you're cheating every shot, probably because of that design. I don't know. Anyway, Michael Bay is a uh, one thing I'll say about Michael Bay. I can say everything I want about the, how I don't like those movies. He knows how to make a movie that makes a billion dollars. That's true. That's true. I just kept wondering that whole time I was watching it. I was like, how do these robots not get like caught on each other with all these moving parts? How are they? Yeah, not, that's like, what's weird about together? it. Is you'll, you'll come up with your own version of like the weird questions around it. Now, what's this girl doing here? Um, she was kind of in mid sort of like, I'm stopping here to talk to my person and then moving on to the next thing. So yeah, that's a little bit of an awkward position, right? Yeah, this is getting a little better here. I know what's going on there. Again, get into these interiors a little more. This is okay. good. This little thing with top of the belly. Be- okay, so with glasses, you guys, you got to look at them. And it's, it's fine to just knock them in. But there's some, you know, they usually kind of pull in this way a little bit, you know, depending on what kind of glasses they are. They're so hard. That way, this <laughs> way. Well, think of them this way. Like, you're just putting them in. Like, a lot of times, the lenses sort of tilt this way. Mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. the nose. You know, and I'll just knock it in and go, okay, it lands on the ear right there. Then I come in here and I go, oh, that's curves a little bit. There's that little jut out if it's like a wayfarer type of thing these sort of jut in a little bit okay. and then how does this curve it curves like that and like that and i don't want to overdo it i don't want to just outline them so i'm probably going to show some of it you know and then if they're mm-hmm. shades even if they're not shades what i look for then is i sort of squint down and go okay there's a dark in here in here and i can actually not put that much in there because you're looking through glass and it sort of emphasizes that idea that i'm looking through glass and see i don't have to put that much Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then like you know some of the wayfarers and things have these big it drops down like that goes boom 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 and then sometimes i can even see it off the back of the ear there right this usually dips and goes over like that you know so you know i'm more or less thinking of it like that and then here's the nose and then i and then i shape them boom 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 right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And i don't want to over indicate them because if like you start totally outlining them it starts getting very cartoonish yeah <laughs> so i'll try and soften them up a little bit Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. How much of the, of the hair now in this view, am I going to see about that much? How much is back there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. big major landmark, that back of the cranium in relation to the back of the ear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beanie on the back of his head so he can be a hipster. <laughs> this comes down. I might do a little bit of this stuff. Maybe there's a pattern on here. 
Maybe he's got a goatee. You know, soften that up. This, here's his neck. This is going to wrap around right there, especially from this position. You know, and start building out the face, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can see how loose it is, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like this idea of trying, and I know it's hard, but this idea of like really loosely throwing down the structure and then building on the structure is really the whole game. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I yeah. know it's not easy because you're looking at it initially and you're going, God, it's so simple and loose, but there's just something in those little things, like those little gestures and stuff that you see right in that block in where you go, man, that's it. You know, like, you mm -hmm. nail that. Mm -hmm. like another thing is like, if you're looking at this, like this kind of thing, you know, this is actually going to, you know, it's going to be a little looser here. What's back here. What's pulling up to here. Oh, uh, like a little, like, just like a little ponytail kind of thing, or like a little half up, half down kind of thing, like a little rubber band. So it was pretty, oh, okay. her hair was actually pretty flat and like formed to her head. And then the bottom part was more loose and like flowy. Yeah. So that's why I was trying to indicate like the form of her head, but I don't think it translated well. So I'm going to put a little of that. I want to put a little value right there. I don't want to put too much around her eyes. She looks pretty young. Little bit of cheek mass against the, the, I think that little bit of cheek mass bumping up against the wing of the nose is really important because mm -hmm. otherwise this whole section of the face can go, just go totally flat. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, you know, this, that's fine. But one thing that's really important and it looks like you started to do is I want to, when I have a pose like this, I want to place that shoulder immediately because that, right. what that is, is really important because if it's here, that's completely different than here. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then this coming back, there's probably more back here, probably. You That's know, an area that I really that, struggle with. I'm going to look at that curve right there, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm going to look at how that relates to that curve. This hand, and it looks like it's kind of what you did, you know, I'm going to just sort of block it out, which is fine. There's a little bit of funkiness going on in there. Uh, you know, how does the hair end? You know, can I get a few strays here? And even if they're not there, if I feel like it needs it, I put them. Okay. What we're trying to get to, and it takes a little while, by the way, it takes a little while to get comfortable with like adding things in when you're just trying to get a handle on the observational part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? And I want you guys to sort of work through that observational part before. I'm just trying to show you things that, you know, a little further down the line, you'll latch onto, I'm hoping, right? Mm -hmm, mm hmm you know, you always go, oh, I get that whole, that thing, you know, when you get there. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did kind of venture out on her a little bit too. Like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here, look, my arm's sort of going like that. It's not, I'm not going to sit here. I mean, you could, you could do that, but it's. She was, she was kind of leaning in to him as they were like talking. Yeah. So that's where it was more upright because she was more forward. I don't know. It was a weird <laughs> and then what you're also doing is you're going, I got to make this person relate to the other person. Yeah. And I just yeah. ran out of page. That's why he's kind of. Yeah, that's fine. Funky. That. <laughs> yeah. But here again, let's pull that. Let's pull that brow out a little bit. Structure that head up a little. This, this probably depends on how much his head was turned. I want to see a little more of that. It's still a little weird. This, this top of the ear is probably about here. Give me a little, oops, that's too much. And then I, I really, really struggle with um, like a buzzed, like shaved head where there's still hair, but it's like not. Like mine? Full of hair. Um, no, like like a short like buzz, like a, like a fade almost oh, of like okay. there's hair. But it's very, very fine and very. What I usually short. do with that is I go. Let me see if I already have a drawing here I can use. What I usually do with that, <clears throat> if I'm doing it in pencil, is here's the head.
And of course, I have to adjust that ear always too high. I don't know why. I always put the ear too high when I <laughs> lay it in. I don't know why. Uh, what I try and do is like I'll take the side of my pencil. I'll put a really light. Should be lighter than that. But let's see if that'll work. I'll put it. I'll smudge it a little bit with my finger. Okay. And I'll create that little ghost of uh because it's really just a tone uh -huh, uh -huh. When, when it's shaved. And then I can come down here and that's too thick and add in a little more as it moves down. You know, I can give it a few of the little, oops, the little hits here, maybe even a little of that. But this becomes more or less a tone and then it fades into my, you know, more hair. Does that make sense? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Or actually, it's usually up here there's more hair, right? Yeah. And then it fades, you know, and then I'll have it fade down to here, but I'm just using that tone. And I put it down real light, and I just kind of smudge it a little bit, knock in a few okay. hits, like, you know, stubble or whatever, and then thicken up the part where there's more hair. Does that okay. make sense? Mm-hmm, mm hmm Okay, good. Let me see if I can thank jump through here. Go ahead. I was just gonna say thank you. Get these. Where's Aaron? Aaron, you here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So you guys are again, you're seeing the same thing. I'm saying I'm starting to repeat myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> Got shoulders really low right there. You see that? Yeah. Get the same thing I've been saying. Get more into these interiors. What's going on in there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. This bottom of the hair. How did that hair actually end? You got to start. Um, I put up a hair video, right? Uh, if you did, I haven't seen it. Hey, you guys, did I? Did I put that up? No, I haven't seen it. Okay, so I'll put that up today. I'm going to put up two things today. I want to put up a discussion. These are just like discussion things. The hair thing's just a short discussion thing, just a basic sort of thing. And then I'm going to put one up that's the same thing. It's a discussion around stylization, Okay. So then you can start looking at that this week. So you can start going, okay, here's the questions I have for next week and all that. Um, Cause what really, what I want to talk about today is a little bit of vignetting and, and population populating. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because once you start getting uh, this one's not too bad. And then here, really work out like that bark, that's bark, right? Yeah. Like this is the hard part is finding a way to simplify that, but it still reads, right? Like I'm reading it and I don't think it's bad. It's actually pretty good. But my, you know, like if you're going to put this here, you might want to make a little bigger statement with it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like one thing you have to, this is starting to work like that or a proportion, but again, how did this hair right there end? probably a little more there we might loosen this up a little put that cheek maybe in front of the nose a little bit because again there's that mass right this mass is moving and this cheek mass is in front of that nose correct yeah so i always want you know these probably tilt a little more like that maybe i'll see so again when i'm blocking this in there's that little deltoid right there that's kind of nice You know what was happening here there's probably a seam right there if it's a you know like a structured shirt this is nice that little overlap it might have get, it might got a gathering fold there work that out a little more 
I don't like that yet, but that's okay. Um, here, again, there's you know, almost always a pull right there, a gathering fold there, a cut fold there usually. And I know there's exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm just trying to give you sort of simple points of reference. Sure. That yeah. might've gone that way, actually. It probably didn't pull this way. It probably pulled it. Because <laughs> that's part of that. You know, maybe there's a little of that. Then, you know, how does this hair end? Yeah, the, those those were some of the um, biggest challenges this week was, well, hair in general, but long hair. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't usually like to go to this kind of thing for that sort of solution, but I actually think these are just really good um ways of looking at the hair as far as just a what happened here so you can see the way he's massing the hair into big sections can you see that yeah you kind of want to think that way when you're doing it linear okay if you're using tone it's different but it's it's these big masses and then this little line here indicates that section of the hair right the hair lands in big masses and big shapes okay um and then, you know, these you can't really see the end. Let me see if I can find it again. These are really good. The way the hair is masked in a linear way. Does that make sense? Yeah. I see. Look at here. This is really good. You know, these are nice little quick ways of masking the hair. If you're thinking about it, you know, from a linear perspective, I always think it's good to learn things from a linear perspective and then go to a, um, a tonal perspective here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you think in a hair, you're thinking of you got this head shape. And then I'm going, where's this first big mass? There's another one. And under, he, to me, I, I, I feel like this is the part that floats over the back of the head. And then once I get that, and then I go, okay, so maybe they're like on that tangled one, maybe there's a flip right there so I can get that little mass right there. And then once I have that, Then I can come in here and start to break up the next part of this. It's actually going to come down like that, probably. And if I'm keeping it linear, I might just show where those big overlapping sections are. Does that make sense? Aaron, you're muted. Oh, yes. Okay. Does that make sense, you guys, everybody? Yes. So what are we hopefully seeing here? Nothing changes. It's all about big shapes to small shapes, right? Hair, people, trees, buildings. It doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Uh, cars. This one's pretty good. But get those eyes a little more worked out. Okay. Does that all make sense, you guys? Okay, so let's, who has any specific questions? Anybody? Oh, that was a good one. Hey, Haley. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think I did better last week. Really? I, I don't know. I had fun being loose this time. Good. Oh, this one's nice. Yeah, uh, I went right to Orange Circle nice. and a girl in a quinceanera dress came over and they oh. were taking pictures. Actually, I'm going there this week because that's where I'm going to do the live video for this class. Cool. This is great. This one right here is nice. That's a really nice, loose, natural feeling drawing, right? Mm hmm This is pretty nice, getting that sort of idea in there. 
tricky pose right there. Who is that? That's my sister. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Now these, what's interesting is like, I want to say like, give me a little more in this interior, right? Mm -hmm. But what's nice about it is it's so loose and everything. You're sort of describing everything and it feels pretty good. I think you could just pop a couple of things in there and it, it's pretty damn good. That's a nice, loose, believable drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Here's your sister guzzling bourbon. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Do these feel pretty good when you hit those? Yeah, like, it, it feels great. <laughs> yeah, so now bring that into your character stuff and all that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Man, this is nice. Is that your mom? Who is that? That's my sister again. <laughs> oh, is it? That's yeah. great, man. That is really nice. What was she doing? Cooking dinner or something? She was making eggs. Yeah, that's great, man. Love that. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. That's a nice loose drawing, man. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Is this, are these earlier, the ones I'm looking at here? Um, They were is, actually from yesterday. Okay. I hate it when I'm wrong. It pisses me off. Nice right there. Is so is okay. So when were these? Um, those were like uh, I think it was Thursday. So which ones are the earliest? Would you say? Um, gosh, I think it was probably. Um, I did some stuff yesterday. Oh gosh, I forgot which ones came first. Because to me, it looks like these are later. Like, that feels really natural, like you're warmed up. This yeah. one. Um, these feel a little earlier to me. Yeah, those were from yesterday, and I was just kind of, oh, like, so figuring later. stuff out. Yeah. And then this one feels super warmed up. Now, what was he on? Was he on that bench? Yeah. So just when, you know, give me enough, which is what we're going to talk about here in a minute. You know, and I don't know what the bench looked like. Just enough to go, okay, he's on a bench. Whichever way this was going, you know, and that's all, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're drawing it, you know, I think I've said this before, like I'm not, I'm, I'm going to put a landmark on, the, like, if they have their arm on an armrest, I'll put that little landmark there, you know, so I can place things correctly. But then I'm, I'm focused on the figure because once he gets up, the bench ain't going anywhere. And I can knock that in afterwards, right? Right. Is this a kid? Yeah, he was running around with a stick. I told you my dad gave the neighborhood, I don't know if I ever told you guys, my dad gave the neighborhood kids a bunch of swords. I don't know where he got them at. He had all these plastic swords and they're all like the little kids like that. And boys, like they get all wound up when you do that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they're all running around and of course they start beating each other with them and all that kind of crap. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then one of the kids got so worked up. I always remember this because I don't know where he heard this. and. And he was like that, and he and he had his, and they're all crazy. All the kids are going crazy, and then the kid goes, "Look out! He's drunk with power." And I was like, "Where did he learn that phrase?" You know what I mean? Yeah. He's drunk with power, and he said it so like, like, emotionally. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just always, you know. And then I use that later because at Disney. At the Disney stores, we got I got this box because vendors just usually send you samples, and uh, and I was trying to tell them I go look if we're gonna do like pirate stuff we got to do weapons and stuff and a lot of the people higher up than me were like oh no, no, no about weapons or whatever and I go I'm telling you man it's a, it's a classic play pattern and then anyway so I got this box from some vendor of these really cool they were foam swords so the kids couldn't really hold themselves but they had the 
gauntlet thing and all that on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then we had a, uh, um, like a bring your kid to school or bring your kid to work day. So we had all these kids in the building, right? And then I told my manager, I go, hey, go into that, go into that meeting with all the kids in there. Cause I didn't want to do the meeting. I go give them this box of swords. So he gives them the box of swords within a half an hour. Those, that group of kids, which was a lot of kids, probably like 14 kids was just running absolutely amok through the whole building. Right. Which is what I wanted them to do. And then people came out like the CCO, the chief creative officer came out and I went up and she's standing there watching him. Cause it was just kind of a spectacle. And I go, see weapons. Look at these kids. Look at the response to these weapons. These are just simple foam things. You know what I mean? Does that yeah. Make sense? But it's like learning from life. You see those kids do that and you go, oh, that's a little trick I'll use. You know what I mean? Yeah. I One of my I favorite experiences was I went to this homeschool convention and they were selling wood swords. So my sister and I both got some and we started to just like fight. Yeah. And some old dude walked up. It's like, that's not how you do it. And he started to teach us how to sword fight. Well, yeah. The kids, the, all the kids that my dad gave them to, they all eventually started hurting each other with them. Because boys just do that. Maybe girls do too. I don't know. My sister likes swords. She wants to start a collection. You can go get some cool ones down. I mean, they're probably not the cool ones or whatever. They have some cool ones down in like Chinatown in LA. Ooh. Probably a million other places. Okay. Let's see. I just want to check one. Okay. So nobody has anything specific? From this week i do have a question sure um you left a note on the uh plant assignment saying you know for me to put my work and i put the an image with all eight of my plant sketches on it on last week's folder and i did it again this folder because i don't know if you got it oh okay i was wondering so, what was in there. okay yeah. is that something that i didn't give you a uh, point on yeah so but I was just what, kind of what happened with it? How come they're late? Um, I missed the deadline on the day they were due. Oh, okay. And I asked if I could submit them last week. And I didn't know if you got them or not. Okay. I'll, so I'll, I'll go look at them. Okay. Mike? Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Um, how do you do like uh, like expressions, like different kinds? We're going to sort of get into that. That's going to be its own discussion. Oh, okay, cool. And, and probably that'll probably come up next week also with stylization. Oh, okay. But, you know, one thing you want to be careful of when you're doing expressions is you don't want them to become surface, which is sort of like, what's actually exactly what anime does where it's like this big, Where, you know, there's a, like, when you're thinking about this, I shouldn't even talk about this yet, but when I'm thinking about this, you know, this mouth, you know, there's another side here, that kind of thing, right? This is wrapping around. Yeah. I mean, yeah. All these things are wrapping around also, and I'll get into this more. Um, it's way too big. Um, also, it's, it's a holistic thing. So if I'm like the body movements and stuff like that. Well, you know? that's part of it. But if I'm just looking at the face, you know, it's like, you know, if these, these, if I'm smiling, you know, it's going to dig into my cheek a little bit. My mm -hmm. eyes are going to get a little push shut and all that kind of stuff. It's like, it's all works together. Right. Yeah. What happens a lot is that people will just put a big crazy smile. It's like with the anime stuff. That's why it all looks so flat <laughs> because they're not really thinking about anatomy. It's just very surface. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like you it's have just to like think the about that there's this, this shape, if that's my, is doing this. You know, there's volume to this. So yeah. if this is coming, you know, that nose is coming down and I've got, you know, an, a, an exaggerated expression. It's got, you know, inner depth. These, like the teeth here are going to be sort of a ribbon doing that. Yeah. <clears throat> They're not going to be this like mouths open and the teeth are like this. This is a ribbon in there, like a horseshoe like that. And then the right. teeth are going to wrap around it, you know, and then you sort of just get used to, um, you know, and then the cheek mass is going to hit this. This might tilt up a little, you know, and then maybe this is going to shrink up a little depending on what they're doing. 
the eyes that they were smiling like that are probably going to raise up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of stuff going on in here, you know, and, you know, then you just, it's the same thing as what we've been talking about, everything. Then you just get used to the kind of process of it. As long as you're aware of that, it, it becomes a lot easier. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I'll go, I'll do, we'll do a day on that. Okay. And if that'll be, it'll probably be next week. Oh, okay. Thank you. What I'm trying to do is roll everything out in steps. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I don't want to throw everything at you at once. And then you don't really know what to focus on. What we're focused on right now is throwing down the big shapes, working into the shapes. Then we can start getting a little more. Okay. Now let's add expression. Now let's add, you know, nuance yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I don't like what I always see all the time with education is that they put the cart before the horse all the time, or they throw all the information at you at once. And you're like, well, I need to focus on just the basics here. Not, not everything all at once. It's like I always say basic drawing, they sort of roll out this idea of overly stiff drawing from day one. Then you, you know, you do it for a while. And then all of a sudden some, at some point, you become aware that your drawings are super stiff and you might have wasted three years before you figure that out. And then you have to wash it out of your skill set. And that's a little harder. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Where I think if you go a little more, um, um, what do you call it? Loose right from the beginning, and then learn how to go to tight. That's going to serve you a lot better, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's, any other questions? Okay. Hey, Daniel. What's up? Get these, some of these. This one's, so is this later, this, this page? No. That's really? First. That's what? That's the first page. I what about this one? Huh? What about this one? That's the second page. That's third page. Okay. That's the fourth page. Okay. That's the fifth page. So like these kind of guys, we got to get loosened up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. This is feeling like this one's feeling a little more drawing. So is this one. Mm. And this one as opposed to sketching. Does that make sense? Okay. That makes sense though, right? Uh, yeah. Because why are you saying it with a question tight. mark? Huh? Is they're more tight? Is that why? Eh, it's not tight. They're a little more stiff. Oh, I see. And they're and they're feeling more like they're being approached from like a more finished drawing perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want to keep them like nice and loose, right? Okay. This feels very much like a drawing drawing. It's nice though. I like this. I think the folds look fairly believable. I probably would have put a little of that whatever there, that seam, just yeah. a little indication of it. This one's nice. I like that one. That's a nice, you know, finished drawing. It still feels pretty loose. This one. These are all from life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? I was just laughing at the one guy I drew his hand off. <laughs> the the guy with the gut. I drew his hand like really fast. I just do it like a little oh. <laughs> It a looks like Like this one. What was going on with her? I don't know. She just looks sad. <laughs> this one right here, I'm starting to like the way this is feeling like it's rolling over her leg. Mm -hmm. So give me a few that just feel really nice and loose and then build them up. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And you have some in here. Again, like this one feels like that. This one feels like that. They they feel like they're a little looser. And there there is a naturalness to that pose here, which is kind of nice. Probably would have put just to finish this a little indication of that, right? Yeah. 
Sorry, I'm drawing with my mouse now. Okay. Yeah, I've, I was more focused on, I guess, getting like the folds and the clothes and stuff because last week you told me I needed to do more on the interior. So I was trying to show, I could learn more of that stuff, I guess. Yeah, some of that, like that one we we're just talking about, that one I thought felt really good. That the, the folds felt believable. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of that in there. I get it. Um, yeah. Now we want to balance all these things out together, nice and loose yeah. and build them up. Right. Cause like you want to take that into, you know, if you're going to do entertainment designer and stuff, you got to take that into that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And again, one of the things I'm seeing with all that is just a real, just in general with everybody is it's just real general lack of design knowledge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Even just things where I look at it and I go that, that, and it's simple stuff where I just go, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't stay there like that, tied like that. It wouldn't, this, that wouldn't roll forward. You know, it's just a bunch of stuff like that where I look at it and go, there's a level of design and design thinking that's got to go into this stuff. So it's like, it's a combination of this drawing and all this stuff. And then that stuff too. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a whole bunch of stuff. It's got to work together. Okay. But the design thinking is something we got to start really pushing on everybody, I think. Yeah. Let me see if I can find this. Let's move. What I'm talking about here is a little bit the starting to put these things together. Does that make sense? In the sense of if I'm doing this kind of thing, I'm just going to put that in there. And I'm putting two people here. Let me make sure I'm not on the back layer. Yeah. And I'm putting two people here. Number one, I should have put the person in first. And they're at a cafe. This is why I don't like putting the table in first. Hang on. I feel like it should be a little lower. Put her in. Not going to have her holding anything and maybe somebody over here. And I'm just going to ghost them man. I'm not going to worry about fleshing them out. Because what I'm actually thinking about here. I don't like that their legs match up. Maybe I'd put his out. So when I'm doing this, I'm just trying to find forms and sort of build the forms out if I'm just making them up. I'm gonna put her back a little bit. Probably a little lower. And I play around with poses, see what I can come up with. I might move them. I do always move them, actually. And let's just say for now, that's enough. That leg needs to be a little longer. Maybe this leg's back here. Okay, but we'd start building our people. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we're going to go, so 
there's a couple things I can do. And I think I've talked a little about this. I'm going to duplicate this layer. That way I can turn one off. I could go, I don't like it where it's sitting. Because I want to kind of complete this without overdoing it. So again, I might just put the, and then this is going to have the little thing in here. And then I might just put the foreground part of this umbrella in here as a graphic element. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So then what I'm going to do is come in here and probably darken this. I'm going to put just enough info on here. There's going to be, I'm going to probably put this into shadow just as a graphic element. There's a nice dark right there. And, you know, kind of push this a little better. I'd have to reinforce things. I'm going to put probably a little bit of indication of this stuff that goes in here. Sometimes they have these little things that come down and they connect right in there. I just want enough where it's believable. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I always start seeing everything that's wrong with these and I start dancing around a little bit. Now I want that knee kind of out like that. Maybe that doesn't wrap all the way around. It's just sort of there. There's going to be a fold right there. And I start fleshing them out too. Build him out. His arm over here could just go into silhouette. This should follow that. There's going to be a little bit of a shadow value there. Okay, so we could say that that, you know, and then I want to make sure that I probably would have made this table a little bigger if I thought it through so I could put some more stuff on it. You know, coffee, drinks, whatever. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm saying here is I could say, and you know, I'd probably go whatever. Maybe there's a some sort of pavement here. And I would just put enough where I could go, okay, that's, and I wouldn't do it this big on a, this would be more if this size paper was maybe, you know, more like that or something, right? That's too straight in the middle, but you get my point, right? So what I'm saying is I could use this and this table and a few drinks to sort of say what I need to say about this scene. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm gonna put this leg here. And this one can be behind it back over here. Now I know I got a lot of lines in here. I like to work that way. And I'll go in and I'll start picking them um, as, I, uh, as I start developing the drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the way I always work, like I always say, is I kind of work through cloud pattern recognition. So if I put this in here, a lot of things start getting suggested to me. And I feel like the drawing sort of working with me when I do that. And I just like that feeling. I'm going to give them a little bit of a hoodie here, a little bit of a pull there. It'll start to tell me what I need here. You know, and then I'll start picking my lines, you know, what's working, what's not working.
because that's just how I like to work. Okay, so maybe he's got a trucker hat on. Now, we could start to flesh this out a little more. I could go, I'm gonna shrink these guys down a little bit. Or maybe I'll just, yeah, I'll just shrink them down a little bit. I want a little more room. And this perspective would probably change on the ground. But I could come in here now and go, maybe I'm going to go put a foreground thing here. Damn it, hang on. Maybe, I'm always thinking about the Huntington Gardens when I do this for some reason. And I might start to put something here. Now it could be a stone wall. Not going to see that much of the top of it probably. So let's say my eye is actually right about there. So we'll see a little bit of the top of this. Then maybe I'll make an urn or something here. And then I got an excuse to put some flowers. Now what, okay, so what are we doing here? We're going, we've started here. We could call that a day and just say it's a little vignetted scene, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or oh, now I'm just going, okay, I can add a little more into here. Maybe this has a nice little pattern on it. Again, if I was doing this from life, I wouldn't be all that focused on the pattern. I'd be focused more because that's not going anywhere is what I'm saying. Then I'm going to come in here and go, okay, let's flush this out a little. By the way, the, the stone is going to break the edge a little bit. It's probably not going to have a hard edge. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then here I can get a little bit of grass growing up through the concrete. Maybe this actually comes over here. So now my perspective would change a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. And then I'm going to come in here. Now I could put a little bit of stuff to indicate these rocks because the light I'm saying is up here, right? Yes. Right. And then some of these stones, I could just go, these are just a little darker. So I could give them, you know, and I could do this with the side of my pencil. If I was using a pen, I'd do it like this with a little bit of, and then I'm going to come in here and give these things a little bounce of texture here and there. I want to make sure all the stones aren't the same size. And then I can pop this little line there. And then maybe back here, I've got a little tree or something back here. So I'll just mass that together maybe. Because why? Things are starting to go back a little bit maybe, and I don't want to really overemphasize. Maybe there's just general stuff back here, you know, shrubbery. And then maybe back here. At a museum, they got a column building back here. It's got some stairs coming up to it. Okay, does that all make sense so far? How we're starting to just throw this all together? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. And this is usually how I do this. hands are doing weird stuff today and then maybe i'll put i don't know so sometimes i just drop something over here and go maybe i want something there to overlap that building 
you know, maybe this is a little restaurant at the Huntington Gardens, and maybe out here is that little, whatever they call that, the little podium that has the menu on it so you can look at the menu before you go in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So I'm trying to think of little things that I can do that might be, a, you know, kind of fun. And maybe it's the edge of another wall here. <clears throat> and then I got a building back here. So now what I want to do is go, I want to get some movement in here. And then if you notice, I'm always jumping back to sort of Maybe start to give them a little bit of expression. Maybe she's holding up a drink. So if you can see, I start to just throw down like gestures and different things and, and I'm just playing with them. If I'm doing that with pencil, I'm just doing it real light and then I'll kind of look at it and go, oh, that arm feels weird and I'll move it or I'll go, I don't like that gesture or whatever. I'm trying a bunch of stuff and I'm going to be basing it basically, now I'm making this one up, but I'm going to be basing it based on what I'm looking at in front of me, right? Right. And then I, what I like about this is if I, if I drop these people in very quickly, then I can start to go and work the rest of the drawing. And what's going to happen is it gets my eyes away from this stuff. So when I keep looking at it, I'll keep looking back at it and go, oh, that needs a little of this. And that needs a little of that. Then I get away from it again. Then I go over and start working on something else. And I go, oh, that nose isn't quite right. And I just keep adjusting back and forth. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. And then if I want to back here. Maybe there's a path back there or something. What I usually do for this kind of crowd stuff is I go in here and I start putting just really super basic shapes in here. Because why? Because they are in distance. They're in the distance, but also I want to get the main, one of the main things I want to do with people back here. And then look, I'm just going to go Here's another person, here's another one. And as they go into the distance, they're gonna get less and less. And then back here, I can really get less. And then what I usually do is I go, okay, I start to get like this little crowd or whatever back here. Now back here, they could get really small. And then what happens is, is I sort of start grouping these things together. I might put a kid down here. Maybe a little older kid. And then I just get these little really basic forms in here. And then I can come in here and go, okay, I'm going to put a little collar there, a little fold. I'm not going to overdo these at all. You know, maybe this one's carrying a shopping bag. And I start to create this bundle or this little bunch of, and the reason I'm doing that is it starts to give this thing movement. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, and I can give this one shorts. Maybe that foot's coming forward. I don't like that. You know, different kind of collar here, maybe a hoodie. Maybe it's got the two little things there. Little bit of information on the face. What I'm really gonna rely on for the faces and things like that and this kind of thing is just the shadow values and the socket values and things like that. Does that make sense? Put a baseball hat on one. Maybe this kid, oh, this is an old theme park thing. Maybe this kid's got a balloon. Maybe there's another balloon back here. Why? Balloons are fun. Balloons mean you're out someplace where they sell balloons, which means it's like a public something. Um, gives it a little bit of, of rhythm popping up above those heads. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I don't want too many of them. And I can't always do that, obviously. Sometimes I can. 
and then maybe this is you know maybe there's a line right here and this this um walkway comes up here and then i start going okay see now how we're starting to get okay what are we getting we're getting a little bit of movement in there correct uh-huh and we're getting um scale okay so one of the things that you do this for it's a couple of things you want to get movement in there you want to get activity but also you want to have a sense of scale so if i got a building back here you know how big is this building in relation to these people So I got this building, I'm gonna flesh it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna go, okay, now I got this blank area up here. So maybe there's another building over here somewhere. You know, and then I have to go, what kind of building is that? Maybe it's got Gothic windows, I don't know why. And maybe this part just goes up square like that. Then I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to put another, maybe a, what do you call it? Bush against that. And maybe way back here, there's something. And again, you know, it would be in front of me, obviously, but if I'm making it up, then I just got to think of different types of buildings. And then maybe something back there. And you see how we're starting to get a little, a lot more populated scene that, fe that feels like it has a little bit of activity in it. Uh huh. Then I'm yeah. realizing that she's leaning way too straight. So I want to push her back a little bit. Still not right. And by the way, I still don't like that pose. Um, She's too stiff or she's just, I don't like the pose yet, but I'd fix that. And this is going to come down here. And this is going to come out. I'm not going to worry too much about those two people in the front. I kind of like him. I think he's working. Okay. Um, okay. Then I'm going to come back in here in the foreground and go, okay, now I'm going to punch my line work up here. Why? To make things pop, make things pop forward. Right. Right. Because this stuff can get a little heavier up here, you know, and then probably they'd have something down here, which means I have to open up my ellipse. Maybe there's another one of these urns down here. That way I can break up this a little bit. Maybe this one's got a different type of plants, a big palmy plant coming out of here. Same kind of pattern on it. And then maybe there's something, maybe there's another table here. I don't know. Something in the foreground. And then, you know, maybe this one up close, I put a little more information on here. Maybe there's a plate of food here. That way I'm starting to get, um, you know, I'm starting to get overlap. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I want to get through to you guys, and then I'd have to come in here and develop like this girl, I think we should come back. And I'd have to develop her up. I don't like her yet. Again, I'm, I'm okay with him so far. And I come in, I pick my lines. What do I like? That knee's right there. That pole's going to be there. And I'd have to bring her up to the same level. I might not. I'd, I'd go in and pick a different line here. I don't like this shoulder at all. But you see, I'm just going back into my line and I'm starting to build. I'm not really like erasing and all that stuff. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to come back here and just go, okay, I want to put a little bit, like the bottom of the shadow of the nose, a little indication of that ear. Got a little bit of hair. Maybe this guy's wearing sunglasses. Cap off that hat. V neck. You know, just trying to think of different types of clothing I can kind of indicate. I'll put that little bit of that forearm in there. Put 
Put a hand here, maybe he's holding the glass. You're not even going to see this stuff really, but it just gives it, it breaks up the shapes a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now I'm creating this weird little man right here. Kid's hand will be there. And then, you know, I'd flesh out what the legs are doing. Maybe there's also shorts, a little bit of a calf there. And then as I push it back, see how that starts to work? Yeah? Yep. And I probably put, now I'm looking at it and going, I want somebody, I don't want to block all these people, but I kind of want somebody here, maybe a little bigger, walking a little closer to everybody. Maybe it's a big sun hat. Maybe his hands coming forward. Get the legs to work pretty good. You know, and I build this person in the foreground walking up. That bill right there, that brim on the sun hat will give me a dark shape to, to put over these people back here. I don't need much on the legs and stuff back here. More kids here, more people. We're starting to just get, and I developed this up. This hand could come back. This should come here. That should go there. More hair on this one. And you see how we're building that, um, the idea of movement and foreground, middle ground, background. Now we started this off with going, I could have left this just with the umbrella and the two people having drinks, right? Right. Or I could have left it where I had the two people having drinks and then the little fence over to the left or the right and the urn or whatever on there. Or I could have left it, you know, just the foreground area and then, or I could have left it with just some, an indication of the crowd back there. Or I can leave it here with a little bit of indication of crowd, some buildings back there. And do you see how now you're getting a much more um, interesting scene? Yes. Um, and then I go in and I'd adjust now, this is like my throw down and then I go in and adjust and then things like putting that table in the foreground. Another thing I like about it is I like, I actually like cutting their legs off there. I don't need to see like in the entire of them. It's more about this interaction between. So I'm going to go back to that. I want to focus on that more. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then I wouldn't put, even if they they have like a cup of coffee here, I probably actually go. and put a glass of wine here, just because it's more interesting. And maybe one here. Why? Create depth. Yeah, and also I'm going, I don't wanna work out that leg on that girl. I'm gonna put this here. And it's not that I'm going, oh, I'm trying to avoid drawing something. It's actually because I just go, I actually don't think that's that important. I think what's more important, again, is the interaction. So I'd rather go focus on what's happening here and start to go, you know, maybe I'll give her some glasses. Put that nose where I think it really belongs. And just adjusting. Get this hair right. Maybe this hair is a little darker so I can get a dark mass here. Get that shoulder worked out correct. Start to pick the shapes I like in here. 
And then this, what another thing I like to do is I, before I knocked in everything on this glass, like I would knock in this glass. And then if I had some of her leg in here, which I do, I would take my eraser and lift it out a little bit. So it went behind that grass, glass, it would get lighter and then get heavier again when it came out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So I'd rather concentrate on this stuff, you know, what's going on between the interaction with these people, the crowd, all that stuff. Then, you know, and plus I like this because this stuff in the foreground, I'd find out something else I could think of, like, you know, what's on the plate, maybe a few things here. I'd put, you know, maybe some food that's breaking this edge a little. I'd darken this. You know, give it a little shine right there. You know, I could even put somebody here if I wanted. That's right. That's smiling, you know. Why? Because because people aren't like robots and well, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So maybe I put this girl here and she's got her hand around this um, wine glass. And this, if I have her looking happy, I start building this, you know, image or whatever this. I'm going to give her a shirt right there to break up her jacket. Let me go a little thicker here. You know, I could have this hand on this. Start to build that idea. You know, because then if I put, again, it adds another layer of motion, of movement. It adds another layer. If she's smiling, she's kind of smiling. I'm getting that, I'm starting to project that like, hey, this is a fun place. It's exciting. People are having a good time. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then it's also, you know, all the, you know, and then I could put, figure out the, whatever the ground, you know, I have to figure out the ground plane a little bit. Again, knock this in a little more, knock this in a little more. And I'm starting to build, you know, uh, an overlapping scene with some excitement in it. Yeah. Yeah. And let's look at some interesting examples of this kind of idea. Is there any questions on that? Does that all make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Also now the chair is starting to get more important. You know, maybe there's those nice little swirls in the chair. Okay. Maybe I'll flesh out this, her holding that drink maybe. So let's look at this, hang on. Oh, that's weird. Where did that go? Hopefully I can find a big image of this. Hang on. Yeah. Perfect. 
You see how he's doing that same thing? Only he's doing paint, obviously. But you see what how these look at these these images right here in the foreground. They are really just blocked in, really loose. Look, you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but look at all the movement. And then look, it's exactly this. These two guys right here. Look at shadow value, shadow value, shadow values. A little bit of teeth, shadow value. Shadow value, it's all defined through shadow value, correct? And then these two guys <coughs> in the foreground, what are they doing? They're all happy, they're playing music and they're in the foreground. So they're, they're the thing that's leading you into like this idea, this is a very fun environment. Does that make sense? Yes. I love Dan Guzay's stuff, by the way, it's cool. Like, I like how painterly he is. You see that? <coughs> yeah, you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this guy, he's been working for Imagineering for like 40 years or something, you know, as a freelancer or whatever. And then look at the reflections in the street. So he didn't just keep the street boring. He made it look like it's a little bit wet. Um, he did, let's see if we can find a couple other ones. Oh, I know a good one. I'm looking for people who do stuff really loose is what I'm looking for. Hang on. There's another guy that was super loose. I love the way he did stuff. Hang on. I don't know why I got a cough all of a sudden. Let's see if I can find a bigger one. So let's shrink this down. So look at all that movement that, and you know, how cool it is that Herb Ryman would do in these um, uh, theme park renderings, right? This is Epcot. See all the movement and everything in there, you see it? Yeah? Yeah. There's even movement in the law. In the what? Um, and, and the way he did the lighting, there's even the light even is right. So, but look, let's zoom in on it. Again, here's the couple in the foreground going, hey, this is awesome. And then it goes back into look at how abstract this stuff is. Look at the kid's face right there. There's nothing there but a, a skin tone, a hair, and some uh look at this one. It's just a couple of marks for the eyes and stuff, a hit for the teeth. Look at this one, right? And then as you go back here, look at nothing. You see that? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. And then look here, every now and then, look, he gives you these two that are pretty fleshed out. Really not that much, but still, look, it's still um, eye sockets and stuff. Then here, he gives you this cool, enough information to show that they're showing, you know, some costume from another part of the world. And then this one a little fleshed out. So it gives you a little more here and there popped in there. And then just movement. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. That's the stuff right there, man. Let's see what else we can find from Herb Ryman because I think he's badass. He would do such abstract, sort of abstracty, like there's another one. See if we can get a big one. Let's see how. Here's another nice one. It's a really famous one. I hate it when I have it on large and it just gives me these small images.
Yeah, let's see what we can blow in here. Okay, so look, <clears throat> here's the people over here, artists or whatever. Look at the nuns. It's a flesh tone, this value, and then lighter value, that, that. Okay, that there's nothing there. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's nothing there, but everything's there. Okay. Same thing in the background. These are just brush strokey, cool little look at that's what, like wet into wet washes. It looks like this is gouache, this thing, I think. Brush and scale work right there. And then as you go back here, look at the people back here. Nothing. It's just a bunch of dashes and dots, right? Mm -hmm. It was a bitch. I remember seeing, I think I've seen the original of this over to Imaginary. It was really big as I remember it. And then one other one, what was I just going to say? Ooh, look at that. Same thing here. He's not putting a lot of effort into those people, but it's plenty. There was one other one. Ah, shit. Now I forgot it. Oh. I love this rendering. Hang on. See if I can find a big one. This is a great example of this. Not now, not with people, but with more than people. So let's see what this one looks like. Yeah. So look. Super <clears throat> beautifully rendered out, correct? Yes. So let's go look at the, see the horses and the carriage and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, there is nothing there. He gives you enough of the horses right here. And then look, as it goes back, it's totally abstract. You see that? Look at the yeah. people over here. Look at the people over here. He hit their faces with red. This this color is a little off on this one, but it's close enough. And then look back here. Movement, scale, excitement. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then a super badass rendering. So what we want to start doing now <clears throat> is going let's start at let's start thinking about vignetting and what i want you to think about is not just oh i'm trying to get the whole scene go you know okay it's two people standing on the corner talking to each other maybe i put the the edge of the corner maybe i put the the whatever that's called the walk don't walk thing you know the that pole that's always there maybe i put that and a little blur flurry of that information um, you know, and maybe way in the background, a car or something just lightly knocked in there or something like that. I want you to start thinking about scene building and vignetting and also going, okay, this, I want to do something. This is an active location. I want to do what we just did a minute ago with, uh, populating it, you know, creating a scene. Does that make sense? So we're not just we want to focus on people. And if you're still, you know, focus on people, I'm totally fine with that. But what I want to do now is break open the door. If you're, if you're a little further along and start to go, okay, now it's, we're cracking it open. We're going to put foliage in there. We're going to put um, uh, multiple people in their crowds, buildings back there and start to populate these things and put all this stuff together. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's very exciting to me. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, questions on this? Anybody? Mike, I had a question. 
Yeah. Um, in, in order to make our drawings really interesting with so many different aspects, is it all right if we start trying to make things up on our own? I wouldn't do that yet. Okay. Because that, again, that you got to go really get a handle on this before I think you start jumping to um, drawing from imagination. Right. Okay. Um, and that starts to fall into the category where I go, you don't even have this down yet. And you're just going to start making stuff up. Right. Yeah. And the making stuff up comes out of this. Okay. You can kind of see how I'm building stuff. I'm building stuff through just simple shape language. Right. And then I can pile as much information on that shape language as I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in order for me to make things up, I've got to fill my data banks up full of stuff. Like, you know, that arm's pulling forward. How's that fold going to react? And after a while, it starts just getting into your um, your visual vocabulary where you're not really thinking about it that much, you know, um, especially if it's in front of you. And the thing I like about working from life, you know, why I think it's so important to work from life, by, by the way, whether it's paint or drawing, is that all the answers, A, are right in front of you, right? Yeah. All the answers are in front of you. And then you're you're getting knowledge that's based on reality. And then you can start putting those things together and going, okay, now I can start making things up, right? Yeah. What I'm seeing all the time, again, is students for some reason just making things up. And I look at it and I go, you just made that up. Oh yeah. And I go, yeah, it looks made up. You know what I mean? It's It looks made up. Like, why are you doing that? You know what I mean? You, you need to like, if you don't know how, and I do this too, if I don't know how something, I don't have a knowledge of it or something, or if I'm doing something that requires, um, whatever you call it, um, reference or whatever, then I go look at it. You know, I don't sit there and copy the photo. I just go, oh, I'll do a couple drawings of it, figure out the shape language, just like we were talking about with the dog, remember? Yes. What's the shape language of the dog? And, you know, guess what? Dogs all have the same anatomy. They might be different breeds and this one might have longer legs or longer hair or whatever but they still have the same basic anatomy so like once i get a handle on that basic shape language and if i run into trouble with something like with let's say that that front little line that happens on a dog right here that chest area right if i look at it and i go man that's tricky then i might just go jump over and look at a and you can do it on your phone just go in and find a breakdown of the dog's anatomy and go, oh, that's what's going on in there. There's two muscles right there. And then there's one up here. Okay, I got it. Now I get how it works. And I sort of like, I start filling those knowledge gaps with um, just a quick look. And then I go back to drawing from life and I go, okay, now I know how to figure that out. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes more sense. Thank you, Mike. And I think also do that because you do, you know, anatomy and all that stuff is really important. But what I see all the time is, again, people get hung up on it to the point where, and I think it's really good to learn all that stuff. But I also think that there's a lot of, when you're working constantly from life all the time, there's a lot of stuff that you can sort of, when you start running into problems with it and, and going, that's an, that's a complex shape underneath there or whatever. Then you can go like, look up a deep dive on it real quick and go, Oh, that's what's going on. And then go back to life drawing again. I think what people do is that sometimes they go, they go on these tangents where they're like, I'm, you know, I hit this, you know, they're just doing endless studies on anatomy. But then when I go, okay, draw a dog, they draw a dog like shit because they don't understand any of it. They don't know how to put any of it into practice. It's like, okay, you can draw a half-ass schematic breakdown of this bone structure, musculature, whatever of this animal, but you don't know how to draw it. You just know how to put these regions together. Does that make sense? Yes. And what we're trying to do is kind of combine all that stuff. You know, yeah, go learn, you know, check out the anatomy and all that stuff. But I think sometimes it's not this deep dive into anatomy. It's, oh, I'm just having a little trouble drawing that part of the anatomy. So I'll just go look at a, a schematic, you know, a breakdown of the anatomy and go and figure it out and then go right back to drawing again. I don't know that I need to go down endless rabbit holes of just one thing all the time. Now, sometimes you do. If I was going to go work on something and somebody said, hey, it's going to involve a lot of horses you bet your ass I'd go find some place with a bunch of horses and I'd probably sit there for at least three days and do nothing but draw horses from life. And then if I probably bring a watercolor book and I do some quick studies from life or, or acrylic or something, and I do that. And then, 
I'd also be looking at the anatomy of it a little bit and started uh, deep diving into that sort of thing because I'd need to have that information in my head, right? But what I really want to do is get that information in my head, understand it from drawing it and everything. And then I can start designing based on all this knowledge now I've gained. Yeah? Yes, that makes more sense now. Is that long-winded enough? Sorry. Okay, so what we're starting to do is this kind of thing. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. It's very exciting to me, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Good. Um, and you guys are doing a good job. What I like about you guys is you're not going, I'm not getting like the vibe that you guys don't want to put in the time at all from you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like you guys are going out and having a good time. Hey, by the way, um, I told you guys about the, I think it's Panera bread or corner bakery. I think it's corner bakery. Uh, in Brea, right? Yeah. That I think is a pretty good spot. Just make sure you're being careful. Make sure that you're hopefully, if you're so inclined, go get your, um, um, whatever you call it. And then another thing here, by the way, I'd probably find some place where I could put some shadow values on here. I might even go, that lights up here. I might throw this shadow value off this way and then maybe this can crawl up the fence a little bit. And what does that do? It gives me a dark right in my foreground, right? Yeah? Yeah. This could probably get a value here. You know, on and on. So what are we doing? We're just constantly reacting to what we put down like this. would probably get a value because that again, it's going to give me a nice overlapping thing here. And I would just do this with the side of my pencil. Hang on. And then a lot of times when I do something like this, I'll do it with the side of my pencil. That means that this interior part has to get a little darker, but I'm not gonna, I won't worry. Then I might have to go in and like reinforce the, this, this, and then this is probably got a value also. And then maybe a little core, a little, and then this could maybe just get a little bit of a thing. So maybe that's shinier. And see how that's starting to pull the foreground together a little bit? Yes. So this is sort of like, you guys, if you've been in like an entertainment class, this is sort of, I don't want this to compete with that. You know, when you do those, those breakdowns of a very dark foreground and then it's a like a mid gray and then it's a really light gray and you get that depth yeah so this is sort of the same idea the difference is that we're actually creating depth those things are fine there's a basic idea or a very small idea whatever but then you got to fill in and 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 more do a much more complex scene like this and make that work and that's not going to just be like dark mid light and i see a lot of people and then that starts to look like a bunch of flats like stage flats does that make sense yeah i don't want this to look like stage flats i want this to look like you know and i and i always love to do it like at least start it like this where i'm just going really loose in here and uh and then just building into my shapes i, I just love doing that because it's like you know, and then I'm also chunking up my line where I want to, um, uh, you know, I pick lines that I like, like maybe I like that one. Maybe the, you know, I'll give him a little darker hair, maybe. I'm not going to define his face any more than that. I don't think he needs it. Probably a shadow value under here. 
here's the other leg i'll give that a little bit of a and i just start you know and then at some point i go okay it's done it's nice and loose it's done right it's it's not about it's just about i want to keep it loose and then go how far do i need to take it and i like it to be loose and stuff does that make sense yeah yeah okay so i want to do this is starting to get a little different here. I want to do, um, I still want to do four pages, but now, you know, you can work a little bigger, um, you know, cause you want to, again, here's what I want. I want a variation of scene. So sometimes it could just be one or two items vignetted and that's and that makes the statement. Why do we need to do this by the way? To know how to create natural, organic staging and human attraction. Yeah. And, and if you're going to go into, uh, again, it doesn't matter if it's illustration, entertainment, design, whatever. You're going to have to create scenes. And you need to make them move, moving, exciting, uh, sense of scale, sense of atmosphere, sense of depth. all the, And then also just being able to go, and this is a really good exercise. The vignetting is more than just that. The vignetting is going... What, how can I reduce this down to just what the, let's say the interaction between these two people is, just what do I need to, to set the stage for that? And, you know, it's just like those Glenn Keane drawings we looked at. He doesn't put everything in the scene. He puts just what he needs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also like he did that great one with the little kid standing, you know, with the crowd in front of her. He just did those as like loose line and then, you know, threw a little color on the kid. You really get that sense of when you're a kid and you're outside and it's all the adults and you're not involved and it's, it's just great stuff, right? That's, and that, this sort of idea you have to have as a basic idea if you will want to go into illustration, entertainment design, any of that stuff, because you need to know how to make a scene that's fun, compelling, moving, and not overly, you know, all the lines are like, look like ruler lines where you took straight edge line. That is like, that will kill your drawing quicker than anything. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because what are you doing? You're, you're putting my mind back to, if I'm an art director looking at your portfolio, I'm going, oh, so you took basic perspective and you haven't learned how to loosen that up yet. It's, it looks like, when I see something looks like a ruler drawing, it just completely turns me off. It, it looks like, it looks like amateur bill to me. Okay. When I see overly stiff, overly drawn people, especially if they're telling me a, they're a sketchbook page or something, because I always wanted to see sketches when I was looking at books. And if I saw a lot of times I'd see sketches and I get these aren't sketches, these are finished drawings. You don't know how to sketch. And why is that important? Because I'm expecting you to do get work done very quickly and to be able to um, have a, a dialogue with me very quickly. And the way I like to dialogue is through quick drawings. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, if you're gonna sit there and do uh, some drawing, I'm going, number one, I can't take that into a presentation. It's too stiff, it's not exciting. And if you look at those things that Herb Ryman, uh, we're looking at Herb Ryman and Dan Guze, those two ones we were just looking at the theme park things. Do you know part of the reason why that's so important to get those things to look exciting? Yeah, it's like to establish atmosphere, like the feeling, I guess. It's to, okay, so it's a couple of things, but one of the things that I think is really a main point of it, a lot of times you're showing those renderings to somebody to get money. Does that make sense? Yes. So when, yeah. when, when that money person comes in and you do some great rendering like that Herb Ryman thing with a castle and all that stuff, and the horses all pulling up with Cinderella's carriage and all that stuff, they come in and they go, holy crap, let me open my, my, my purse and hand you a bunch of money because I want to make that thing. That's cool. Or, and I've been on a team, I probably said this, I've been on a team that we did this where we, we didn't, we failed. Michael Eisner comes in, he cut $7 million off our budget. My boss is bitching about it. And I go, it's our fault that, it, that he didn't get it because we didn't convey it to him correctly. Go, let's go out and look at the presentation, Ramsey. It's not that exciting. It's all of our fault. You know what I mean? He's not a creative guy. He wants to pretend like he is. All these money people want to create, pretend they're creative. They're not. You have to show them something and it has to be exciting for, for them to open the purse strings. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or it could be a yes. great idea. It could just be a great idea that like dies on the vine because you didn't 
and forget the money part of it, whoever you're pitching that to, maybe you're pitching it to a, pr a producer, you know, like on at Imagineering or uh, California Adventure, you'd have different producers, right? So there was a producer named Corey Solison, I think was her name, his name. And he was in charge of Hollywood Boulevard, okay? So ultimately, you know, Corey's got to see everything and kind of go, yeah, that's cool, yeah. You know what I mean? And he was a cool guy. But if I don't show that person and convey what it's really going to feel like, and you, you, and you, and just like those Herb Ryman ones, where he's got the light streaming in and all this stuff, and he's really pushing the whole concept. I'd argue that it's just the same thing as exaggeration with people and all that stuff. You have to kind of exaggerate it a little bit to make it feel as exciting as it's going to feel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what's important to me anyway. Okay, you guys, I'm going to let you go. Any other questions? Quick question. If we do a full scene like um, your example, would that be a full page? It could be, yeah. Okay. I'm going to get a little looser as we're going along. Because yeah. what I don't, okay, what I don't want to do is over, like, especially at this point now, I want to start, I'm going to expect certain things and all that, and that's fine. But I don't want to, oh, I don't want to start putting so many parameters around you right now that I'm just strangling you in what you can do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, I want to give you some, now we're starting to open up a little bit where it's like, okay, kind of everything's becoming fair game. I don't really want to get in stylization yet. I'll talk about this week. I'll put up a video on stylization. I just want you to see the overview. It's just a discussion. I'll put up the hair video. Um, and I'm hoping that like with the stylization, don't start stylizing. I just want you to come back and then I'll start the next week. That's what I'm going to talk about. But hopefully you'll have a dialogue ready where you go, I didn't get this or that or whatever questions you have. I like to put those things in front of the discussion. Um, and then we're kind of wide open on scene creation. Now, if you're still very focused on people and you're still, you know, having, some, having problems with that, which everybody does, you can focus on people. I'm fine with that. I'd like to see a few vignetted ideas in there. You don't have to do a big scene. Um, and so I want to go everywhere from like this whole little scene here all the way to um, just a, you know, simple vignettes, you know, like if I, if you were drawing me sitting here having a class, you might just have me from a side view gesturing, show the laptop and show this mic hanging here. And that's it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. What else do I need? Oh, Zoom. You know, and then I'd probably just do a quick indication of all these little windows. Everybody goes, oh, Zoom thing. You know, gesturing, mic hanging in the foreground, laptop, and we're out. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and that's anybody, no more questions? Well, let me get a um, screen grab of the room real quick. But Mike, I actually have a question too. Uh -huh. um, so, um, by crowds, so by drawing crowds, you meant something like the one screen we are seeing right now, right? Well, obviously, yeah. Hmm. It's crowds. Just go anywhere with a lot of people. So in other words, we're basically drawing people in places. We're always drawing people in places. Yeah, but people's in buildings, right? It's scenes. Hmm. Right? Right. We're starting to move into vignetted scenes and, you know, whatever you can. And by the way, you guys, when you're doing a full scene, let me get this. Your mic, you got to do something about your mic, man. It's just something's wrong with it. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it either. Um, Hold on. Oh. Another thing, go ahead. Did I finish? Oh, okay. Um, another thing with this, you guys, if you're doing a full scene like this thing that we just did, Don't always think you got to go wall to wall, even with a full scene, you know, that can vignette off too. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So what we want to do here is start playing with the idea of design and putting all this together. Okay. Movement design, um, interaction, uh, scale, uh, depth, atmosphere, all that. Okay. Okay. Okay, you guys, I'm going to let you go. If you have any questions, hit me up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank You're doing you a great mind. job.
Thank Thanks, you. Mike. You guys are doing a great job. Good luck today. Bye. See you guys.